Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, the DN What If, with another fanfiction. This is the second part of What If Deku Were Dead and He Reincarnated Into a Cat. All credits for this video go to their respective authors. So please support the real author. Check out the link in the description for more details. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Don't ask why, but Izuku wanted a bath. A proper bath. He felt itchy and grimy. He tried to get the message across to the many humans in this cramped apartment but nobody knew what he wanted. So, Izuku decided to take it upon himself to give himself the bath he needed. The problem was that he wanted a bath now and it was getting close to 5 in the morning. If you want something done, you have to do it yourself. He thought a little irritated as he went from room to room. Everyone was asleep, even Pumpkin was asleep cuddled up on Shouta's chest. So, Izuku knew what he had to do. He trotted into the kitchen and walked up to the counter where the sink was. He jumped up onto the counter with relative ease. He walked up to the sink and looked at the handle that controlled the water. It took a bit of pressure, but he managed to turn it on. He made sure to let the water run for a few seconds before he touched it with his paw. It was a little too cold, so he turned the temperature up by turning the handle a little more toward the red color on the handle. He touched the water again and it felt right. He grabbed the sink stopper in his mouth and plugged the drain with the stopper. He watched as the water started to fill up the sink. Then he went to the dish soap, which wasn't on the sink. Izuku jumped down and went for the next best place, under the sink. He had to paw the cabinet door open and once he got it open he peered inside. There you oh, hello. Izuku perked up when he saw that there wasn't just dish soap under the sink, but cat shampoo as well. I guess I should use that. He grabbed the bottle in his mouth. It was a little big and didn't fit fully around Izuku's jaw but that was fine. He was able to jump back up to the counter. It was a bit of a struggle with how heavy and awkward the bottle was, but he made it work. He applied pressure to the cap and opened it. The cap opened with a soft pop. Izuku then tipped the bottle over so the shampoo could pour out and foam up in the sink. Izuku sniffed the air above the steamy sink. It smelt like lavender and lemon. He watched as the bubbles started to froth and foam. Higher the water rose until it was at a comfortable level. Izuku turned the tab off. Soon, the kitchen was quiet save for the inaudible popping of the bubbles. The water was steaming hot and Izuku had to cautiously step inside the water by backing in hind legs first. This way he had a steady grip on the countertop. Oh he thought as he dropped himself fully inside the water. It was hot and all of Izuku's muscles started to relax. Izuku allowed himself to float freely on his back. Yeah, I needed this. He said out loud as his body freely floated and he let his head dip back into the water. It was peaceful and the first time he was allowed to just relax and allow his guard to drop. It all lasted for about maybe five minutes. Izuku was so wrapped up in the water, the heat, and the shampoo that he didn't hear Shouta get up. It also didn't help that his ears were in the water. Suddenly there was light. Izuku cracked his eyes open and looked up at Shouta, who was now standing over the sink. The two of them stared at each other. Izuku didn't stand, instead he just stayed floating. If it were any other cat, Shouta tiredly grumbled and left Izuku alone. Izuku shut his eyes and continued to relax, not letting Shouter ruin his bath. Suddenly something cold and slightly slimy covered both of his eyes. Here, since you want to be pampered, he heard Shouter tease. Well, you weren't going to do it. Izuku snorted. The cold and slimy thing slid down to his nose and Izuku was able to smell it. Cucumber, he exclaimed before using his paw to slide the vegetable into his mouth. Why is the cat in the sink? As Ashi sleepily inquired as he scratched at his back. And why does he have a cucumber slice on his face? He drew himself a bath. Shouta shrugged with a lazy smile as he reapproached Izuku. The coffee maker started to go off and the scent of freshly brewed coffee began to fill the air. So, I gave him two cucumber slices. Where'd the other one go, spicy? Shouta smiled a teasing smile. Izuku made it a point to drag the other cucumber down to his mouth and look Shouta right in the eye as he ate the cucumber. Shouta chuckled and his ashy came up to look at Izuku. This cat is something different. I've heard of cats learning how to use a toilet, but you're saying he drew himself a bath. Well, I didn't draw him a bath. Shouta smiled. Look, he even found the cat shampoo. Shouta grabbed the shampoo bottle and showed it to Hazashi. Hazashi shook his head and gave a laugh. Well, hopefully. He'll be done by the time I finish making breakfast. We have a big day today. Hazashi leaned down and opened the cabinet closet to the oven. Do you think the kids like scrambled eggs? I think so. Hazashi wasn't kidding about the day going to be a long one. It's been about four days since they took the kids in. It was finally a weekend and all men had it off. While both children had some more clothing thanks to the online ordering Abro. And Hazashi had done, it wasn't nearly enough for children who had nothing. So, Hazashi and Abro were going to take Yuri and Hitoshi to the mall to go clothes shopping. Shouta would meet up with them later. He first had to go and close a deal on a new four-bedroom house. 
Yes, a house. They bought a house and all three men were pretty excited. Their first ever house. It was in a good neighborhood and within walking distance of UA so it helped cut back on gas bills. They decided on a house and not an apartment so the children and cats could have a nice fenced in backyard to run around and should they see fit. The backyard will also help with their training. So, the mall trip wasn't just for clothing. They were also there to help the children get their rooms set up. I know you guys are excited. I am too. Shouta grabbed a mug out of the cabinet and started to fill it with coffee. However, you can't go all out. I know you want to, but we're still only emergency fosters. There's still a chance that CPS can deny us permanent fostering. Just get the basics for now. Bedding and pillows and maybe a few toys if they ask for it. I know. It's going to be hard not to spoil them. Hisashi shook his head. I just can't believe they would deny us. I mean, we're three heroes. Not only that be we have Nedzu in our corner. Izuku was surprised when a racer had grabbed him and started to scrub the shampoo through his body and under his fur. He was clearly an expert at this as he didn't even stop his conversation. I know, but that also could be our downfall. We're heroes with seven jobs between us. I'm a teacher in underground. You're a teacher, DJ, and also a spotlight hero. And Aburo is a teacher sub now and spotlight hero. He sighed while rubbing the shampoo between Izuku's paws now. That's a lot of jobs and a CPS worker could argue we have too many jobs and can't properly care for two traumatized children. Shouta picked Izuku up and held him in a way so Izuku was standing. Then he started to lather the shampoo against Izuku's stomach. It's infuriating, but it's the truth. Hazashi sighed and went to the fridge to grab the eggs. One step at a time I suppose. He also grabbed the butter and sat both of those down next to the stove. He turned on the burner and waited a few minutes for the pan to heat up. Shouta pulled out the sink sprayer and started spraying Izuku down. Izuku watched as dirt and, most concerning, fleas started to stain the water a nasty shade of brown. Wow, I guess I can see why you wanted a bath. Shouta blinked as he hosed Izuku down. Let's do a second lather. He insisted. Izuku was helpless as he was scrubbed down a second time. You're so good in the bath. Shouta cooed. Then again dot 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 you made it yourself. I think we should give Pumpkin a bath soon. If you want to deal with the devil then that's up to you. The last time I tried he nearly took my eye out. Hazashi grabbed a wooden spoon and started to scramble the eggs in the pans with it. I'll see about having Aburo help me then. Shouta smiled once he finished with a second, and quicker, lathered and hosed Izuku down. Oh, behind the ears. That feels good. Izuku thought as Shouta got just the right spot and Izuku started thumping his foot against the sink floor. It was a little weird because of the water, but it happened regardless. Good boy. Shouta put something in front of Izuku's face. It was a treat, and Izuku happily took it. Stay there, I'll get you a towel. Izuku was no longer on his back, so while he waited for Shouta, he just started swimming in the sink. Am I high? Why is the cat in the sink? Aburo asked once he entered the kitchen and looked down at Izuku who was doing laps in the sink. He drew himself a bath. Hazashi shrugged as he continued to scramble the eggs. Of course he did. What are you gonna do next? Make nuclear weapons. Aburo teased Izuku. Shouta would return moments later and wrap the cat up into a nice fluffy towel. He dried Izuku off and let the cat go on his merry way once dry enough. Izuku still shook his fur off once he was freed from the towel. His fur puffed out before it went down only seconds later. Shame he can't clean out the sink. These are his fleas. Not mine. Shouta smiled while washing the sink out. Izuku wasn't listening. He was gone and let the adults talk. I got you. Pumpkin started charging at Izuku the moment he walked down the hallway. Oh shit. Izuku cursed before slipping on the hardwood floors in an attempt to get away from Pumpkin. Pumpkin gave chase. Even when Izuku tried to hide in Hitoshi's and Uri's bedroom. I don't care about those humans. Pumpkin tried to block Izuku's path, but Izuku was smaller and slipped under the larger cat. They ran inside the bedroom at top speed. Izuku jumped on Hitoshi. Instantly this woke Hitoshi up with a gasp. What? Hitoshi cried while he sat up. Izuku jumped on his human's shoulder and hissed at Pumpkin from down below. Pumpkin hissed right back. This boy can't stop me. He then charged and jumped on Hitoshi's shoulder. Because of his impressive size, he actually knocked Hitoshi back. What the fuck? Hitoshi exclaimed in alarm, but it was short-lived as Izuku was on the ground. Pumpkin jumped down and continued to give chase. The two of them ran out of the room at high speeds. Hey Aburo shouted but Izuku realized that even if the man summoned a cloud it would probably be too late as Izuku was coming up on a corner. He trapped himself. Looks like little Deku ran himself in a corner again Bakugo and his gang all had devilish faces plastered on as Izuku turned around in fear. P please. I just. I didn't do anything. Kakan. He whispered fearfully. I don't know the boy with the extending fingers grin. I mean you did exist. I say that's enough justification. Right, Bakugo. A small pop exited from Bakugo's right hand. More than enough. Not again. Never again. Izuku gritted his teeth and actually sped himself up instead of stopping. 
Izuku then jumped and kicked his hind legs off of the first wall, which propelled him just enough for him to go for the second wall which he also kicked himself off of. Izuku flew in the air, over a shocked pumpkin, and on the ground behind the orange cat, then he gunned for the safest option. Aburo who was thankfully standing up watching him and Pumpkin the same as the others. Izuku climbed up the man's long legs. Okay, okay. Aburo quickly grabbed Izuku. I got you. It's okay. He held Izuku in his arms. Izuku was shaking, though his shaking wasn't from fear. It was from excitement. I, I can't believe I just did that. This cat will fight a human, but Pumpkin is what has him shaking. Aburo shook his head as he patted the back of Izuku's head. There, there, little guy. Aburo comforted Izuku. Hitoshi came out of the bedroom seconds later. He was bleary-eyed as he held, and equally bleary-eyed, Iri on his hip. Iri rested her head on his shoulder as she looked like she was fighting sleep. She rubbed at her eyes as Hitoshi approached the table and yawned. Good morning, kiddos. As Ashi smiled. Morning, Iri responded but Hitoshi remained quiet. Hitoshi set her down at the table. The chair had books as a booster seat for the tiny girl. He then took his own seat next to her. Are you thirsty? Aburo asked both children while placing Izuku on the countertop. Milk please, Hiri whispered in Hitoshi. Well, Hitoshi remained silent while tugging at his collar. In fact, if Izuku was looking correctly, Hitoshi looked a little more nervous than normal as he wouldn't make eye contact with any of the men. Hitoshi's nervousness was felt as the men all decided to just leave him be for the time being. Izuku jumped from the counter and swiftly jumped into Hitoshi's lap. Hitoshi was clutching at his pants in such a grip that his knuckles were turning white. He kept his head down and seemed to be biting his lips as if he trying to suppress himself from speaking or making any sort of noise. Izuku gave a meow as he stood up on his hind legs and lightly touched Hitoshi's face with one of his paws. Hitoshi just shook his head almost fearfully at Moss. Izuku just didn't understand where this behavior was coming from. Yeah, Hitoshi was always quiet around adults the most, but this was genuine fear from the looks of it. Cups of milk were placed in front of each child. Hitoshi, what's the matter? Shouta inquired and Hitoshi just didn't look up as he was now starting to shake a little more intensely in his seat. Well, they would get their answer when Hizashi stepped up to put the eggs on the table. Hitoshi flew out of his seat in his fear. Izuku went flying with him as the two of them tumbled onto the ground. I'm sorry. Hitoshi backed up and had his arms out like he was protecting himself from a blow. More specifically, a blow from a wooden spoon. Like the one Hizashi had in his hand. Shit, Zashi. The spoon Shouta acted quickly he grabbed the spoon from his husband and chucked it into the sink. It clattered loudly causing Hitoshi to flinch. Izuku whined and rubbed himself under Hitoshi's chin, trying his best to comfort his friend. He wasn't going to hurt you, Izuku tried to say. But such is the pain of being a cat, no matter how much he spoke nobody understood his words. Hitoshi just kept trying to back away until he hit the wall. It was a pain that Izuku knew a little too well. I'm sorry, Hitoshi only repeated with a sharp inhale. I'm sorry. He swallowed hard and kept trying to back up even though his back was against the wall. Big brother Iri tried to jump down but Shouta grabbed her from under her arms before she could jump down. No, he whispered to her while quickly holding her on his hip. Let Aburo handle this. Hey, hey. Aburo was gentle as he squatted down so he and Hitoshi were at eye level. It's okay. He told Hitoshi and he gently grabbed Hitoshi's right hand and made Hitoshi touch Izuku's back. Can you tell me how spicy feels to you? Hitoshi looked scared as it looked like he wanted to speak, but was forcing himself to remain silent. It's okay, you can tell me. Aburo whispered. A sniffle left Hitoshi and he sucked in a shaky breath. He's dot 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 soft. His fur is slightly damp. Maybe. His voice was barely above a whisper. He swallowed hard. Good. That's good. What color is he? Olive green no brighter than that. Bottle green. He settled on saying and he picked Izuku up. Yeah, I can see that as well. You hear that? He asked and Izuku caught on quickly. He stated to purr loudly as he curled up into Hitoshi's lap. What is he doing? Hitoshi's eyes started to soften as he came down from his panic attack. He's purring. He scratched Izuku behind the ears. Izuku leaned into Hitoshi's touch. I like it when he purrs, it's strangely comforting. Aburo smiled as he watched the two of them for a few moments. Feel better? He asked him with a smile and Hitoshi nodded weakly. Good, I just want you to know, we'll never hit you. Especially not with a wooden spoon. Your uncle was cruel for doing such a thing. Aburo was cautious as he offered his hand for Hitoshi to take. Hitoshi was hesitant as he reached up and then pulled his hand back just a smidge only for him to eventually take Aburo's hand into his own. There we go. Aburo helped dust off Hitoshi's back. We're all good. Come on, let's have some breakfast before it gets cold. Aburo helped Hitoshi back into his seat and shout a puttery in hers once it was clear that Hitoshi was calmed down. Izuku's ears perked up when he heard Aburo whisper to Hizashi. Throw out all the wooden utensils. We'll get substitutes at the mall. You know, Moss, you take to that vest pretty well, better than most cats. Hitoshi told his cat as they walked into the mall. 
He picked Moss up, so the cat wouldn't accidentally get trampled by the many many people in the mall. He then put Moss on his shoulder. Eri let out a whimper. There are so many people, she whispered nervously. Aburo picked her up and carried the tiny girl on his hip. Yeah, it's the weekend. That's when most people go to the mall. Aburo explained to her gently while tucking some of her hair out of her face. He spotted the clothing store for children and gave his ashy a smile. I'm going to take Eri over to the children clothing section. Think you can handle Hitoshi. Hizashi smiled and walked closer to Hitoshi and Moss. All right, Hitoshi, what kind of style do you like? Hizashi asked as he started to lead the boy towards the shops teenagers like. Style, Hitoshi softly asked. Yeah, your fashion style, you dig. Hizashi gave him a grin and Hitoshi just continued to stare blankly at the man. This made Hizashi's smile falter a little. Whatever fits, I guess. My old style were usually shirts or pants my uncle didn't want anymore. He whispered the last part. Uh, well, I guess that changes today. Come on, let's try this store. Hizashi pointed a punk, gothic store. I have a feeling you might like this kind of clothing. Hitoshi looked at it. Okay, so, inside they went. The store itself was darkened to fit the aesthetic of the black clothing. The whole store was covered in this darkened carpet that had bright shapes. This was done so the shapes would be illuminated by the black lights lighting nearly the whole of the store, save for the clothing racks. Whoa, Hitoshi sniffed and could smell the distinct sweetened smell of incense. Nag Champa unless he was mistaken. It was a lot for the senses to take in at once, though, the dimmed lights were welcomed in the case. Go ahead and pick out a couple of shirts and pants, as Ashi encouraged. Hitoshi stared at him. Anything? He asked a little unsure. If his uncle ever had to buy him something, like underwear, then his uncle would pick it out. Hitoshi never got a say. As Ashi smiled encouraging. Whatever you want. He didn't believe that. Still, he remained hopeful. He went to the first rack of shirts and eyed them up and down. He looked at each shirt on the rack. He saw one he really likes. It was a simple t-shirt that was purely black at the front, but when it was turned around it had the illusion of two bright red wings sprouting out of the back. It even had a loose red feather floating down. He knew it was brand for Hawks. He liked Hawks the most and thought that Hawks deserved to be at least number two. What do you think, Moss? He whispered to the cat. Moss twitched his ears and looked at the shirt and then looked at Itoshi. Then he nodded firmly. Okay. He looked over at his ashy who was looking through the racks himself. Hitoshi was hesitant as he drapped the shirt over his arm. The fabric was cool to the touch and he waited for Hizashi to come up and tell him he couldn't get the shirt. It never came. So, Hitoshi kept on looking. On a different rack a button-up shirt caught his eye. It was a collared shirt, black in color, of course, but it had all different kind of cats all over it and was trippy. The cats were all white drawings so they would pop out. They all had a different style to them, like one was a cat skeleton. The other cat had four eyes and a crescent moon on its forehead. They looked like they were in space with stars and jewels in the background. I love it, he whispered. He heard Moss huff. What are you? The fashion police. Hitoshi teased and he put the shirt down with the Hawks-inspired shirt. Then he saw it. A black hoodie. A hoodie that was calling him. There was a small problem. It was for girls. The hoodie was a crop top that most certainly cut off at his midriff. The shoulders were exposed by ribbons leaving the arms protected by the sleeves. The hood of this hoodie had cat ears, and in the center of the hoodie was a cat sitting down with paw prints trailing behind it. It was perfect in calling him. He could hear it at Toshi, by me. He bit his lip and looked over at his ashy. The man was still distracted by his own browsing that he didn't notice Hitoshi. Okay, mix it in. Maybe he won't notice. He decided to try as he reached up and quickly took it off of the rack. He put it between his other two shirts and continued to browse. He heard Moss meow in a bit of confusion. I know, I know. He whispered as he moved away from the girl's second in a hurry. I just dot 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 it's cute. He argued. Moss almost seemed to shrug before he laid back across Hitoshi's shoulders and continued to watch. Hitoshi found a few more shirts that caught his eye, but didn't want to risk pushing his luck. So, he stopped when he had four in his arms. The hoodie, the trippy cat shirt, Hawk's shirt, and another simple black t-shirt that had vampire teeth printed on the front. No blood added. He tried everything on. The other shirts were okay, they fit well, but that hoodie. He giggled while he looked at himself in the mirror. He loved the feeling of it against his skin why are girls clothes softer. He even put the hood up and it was everything he thought it'd be. I'm getting this. He took the hoodie off and put on the shirt he was wearing before. Hitoshi shifted the hoodie so it was hidden between the others and cautiously approached his ash. I think I found enough. He whispered. Yeah, great. No pants. As soon as he asked the question he waved himself off. We've got plenty of other stores to go to for that. And shoes of course. He stated. Hitoshi watched Hizashi a little carefully. He expected the man to demand to see what he grabbed, but Hizashi didn't. They walked up to the counter. The cashier, a woman, looked at them. She had no smile and looked a tad annoyed. But she didn't say anything if she was annoyed. Did you find everything? 
She asked in a monotone voice. Yep, go ahead and put it down, Hitoshi. Hizashi smiled at the boy. Hitoshi shook a little as he put the four shirts down on the counter. The first shirt, fine. The second shirt, fine. The hoodie, though, it's adorable. The woman showed a smile and scanned it. Hitoshi waited. Wait, can I see that? Hizashi asked and Hitoshi bit his lip. He knew this was it. He was going to have say goodbye to the hoodie. The woman showed it to Hizashi. Hizashi looked at Hitoshi. Where'd you find this? Hitoshi kept his teeth biting at his lip and he pointed towards the girl's section. On the dot 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 wall dot 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 he whispered, Oh I see it. Thank you. Then, Hizashi was gone. Hitoshi blinked and followed the blonde with his eyes. Hizashi spotted the hoodie for himself and started to look at the sizes quickly. Then he took another one off of the rack and inspected it. Hizashi gave a smile and a firm nod and he was back with a second, larger, hoodie. Add that to it. It was just too cute. He told the lady. The lady shrugged and grabbed the second hoodie. Then she scanned the final item and told them the price. Hitoshi bristled at the high price of it all. But Hizashi didn't bat an eye and just handed over his card. The two of them collected their respected bags and walked out of the store together. Hitoshi looked up shyly at Hizashi. I don't understand. Moss yawned lazily and Hitoshi reached up to put his cat. Okay, we're to next, listener. Hizashi asked with a smile. Hitoshi looked around the mall and his eyes landed on a store on the floor above theirs. It was a pretty popular store. When he was in school he remembered the times when kids would brag to him about how their clothing came from that store. He was always so curious about that store. Hizashi followed his gaze. He then gave a nod. Good choice, come on. He started to lead Hitoshi towards the escalators. I, I just want to look. He told Hizashi as he fidgeted a little nervously. Of course, it's a good place to look. It's popular for a reason, and it sells loads of hero merch. As the escalator went up Hitoshi heard a woman suddenly go oh my gosh, that's a real cat, followed by nervous laughter. The woman, who was just a step below them offered a smile when both Hitoshi and Moss turned to look at her. He's adorable, can I pet him? Hitoshi almost gave a yes, but Hizashi spoke quickly. Sorry, ma'am. Service cat and he's on duty. He helps keep his owner calm and we can't have you accidentally distracting him. That dot 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 wasn't a lie. Hitoshi was sure if Moss wasn't here this whole adventure might be too overwhelming for him. Moss's weight was comforting on Hitoshi's shoulders. Moss laid his head back down. All I understand. The woman backed down respectfully. Hizashi looked at Hitoshi and whispered. Service animals can't be pet on duty. If you let people pet him, it'll show he's a fake. He whispered so only Hitoshi heard. Understood. They were soon on the second floor and both of them walked inside of the store. Man, Hizashi wasn't kidding. There was loads of hero merch in the store. From All Might all the way to. Is that Mr. Aburo? Hitoshi asked as he bounded over to the display of Loud Cloud merch. Yep, he's a top hero and he's spotlight. He's in the top 10, so it's only fitting he gets a few shirts and toys. Don't tell him, but I have a few of these shirts myself. Hizashi smiled and put his index finger to his lips. It weirds him out to see his own face on a shirt. Hitoshi giggled a little and offered a shy smile. The two of them walked off to look at clothing. Hitoshi looked at an All Might shirt and scrunched his nose a little. I'm kind of over my All Might face. I mean, he was cool when I was a kid, but, I don't know, maybe I'm just a cynic but he should retire before it gets too late. Hitoshi shook his head. Moss raised his head and surprised Hitoshi with a hiss. Though, he was hissing at the shirt. Yeah, you get it. He patted Moss's head. So, Hitoshi moved on. He looked at Endeavor merch second verse same as the first. Plus, Endeavor is an asshole. Hitoshi commented rather boredly. Then, he slipped from the hero aisle in general and he just wandered aimlessly around. That was until he realized that he, once again, traveled to the women's section. Don't push your luck, he thought, but yet. There was this skirt. A black skirt that would pair well with the hoodie and his other shirts. It was simplistic, and that was all he needed. The skirt was high-waisted. On him it would be knee-length, and it flared out. He touched it between his fingers. It was soft and when he tugged at the waistband it was elastic and stretchy. Oh, that's cute Hizashi. The cat snuck up on Hitoshi making him cry out in alarm. Sorry, sorry. He quickly waved his hands in front of him. Hitoshi sighed heavily and then looked at the skirt. I just spotted it. He muttered as he let it go. Yeah. Hizashi grabbed it off of the rack and lead Hitoshi to the nearest mirror. There, he put the skirt in front of Hitoshi's waistline. Giving the image that Hitoshi was trying it on. I think it'll look nice on you. He told Hitoshi encouragingly. Hitoshi bit the inside of his cheek. It's for girls. He whispered to Hizashi. H.M. Hizashi looked at the tag on the inside of the skirt. Weird. He mumbled and chewed on his thumb. What? Hitoshi asked and turned to look at the man. Well, it's just. I don't see anything on the tag saying that only girls can buy this. Hitoshi blinked. But, he tried to argue. But no argument came. He turned away, blushing, and tapped his two index fingers together. Hizashi sighed and pulled out his phone. Less than a minute later he's showing Hitoshi a picture. 
It was a picture of him, Hizashi, and it looked like he was out drinking with Shouta, Aburo, and a lady. Hizashi was the center focus of the picture with both of his arms around Shouta's and Aburo's shoulders. Hizashi was wearing a party dress, a dress silver in color that went up to his thighs. The dress was a deep plunge so you could see his chest and if Hitoshi wasn't mistaken, he was sure the dress was also backless. It was being held up by straps that wrapped around his neck like a collar. The dress was pretty, seductive, and provocative all in one. Hitoshi might have thought it was a joke, as the woman beside them was a wearing a dress identical to his own. Only in gold and Shouta and Aburo were in crisp suits. But then Hitoshi recognized where this photo was taken. Is this at? The hero gala. Yep. He then winked at Hitoshi. Clothes are clothes. Not one gender owns the rights to one set of clothing. Now, do you want the skirt? Hitoshi gawned on the inside of his cheek and then he nodded. Yes, please. Good pick. I might just make a fashion star out of you yet, listener. Then Hizashi slowly raised an open hand up. Hitoshi blinked and gently tapped their hands together. All right. They looked around some more. They picked Hitoshi up some underwear, a few pairs of blue jeans, and two pairs of shoes. A set of sneakers was the first ones they picked up. Hitoshi picked up a pair of black chunky boots. The boots weren't that tall, which was a plus. The boots themselves would stop at the ankles. They were simplistic lace-up boots. They gave him a bit of a hay boost because of the chunky heel. It was so strange. Why do you let that boy play with dolls? Uncle Ju sneered down at Hitoshi while he drank a beer with his brother, Hitoshi's father. Hitoshi was sitting on the living room floor. How old was he? Five. Maybe six. He likes it. Barbie is his favorite. It's just a phase. Besides, it's not going to kill him to like feminine things. Well, good thing that kid isn't mine. God, you're so old-fashioned, Junauchi. It's just a toy. Hitoshi was exhausted. Who knew that clothes shopping took so much out of a person? Okay, we got you a few outfits and some shoes and underwear. Hizashi checked off a list on his phone. I guess all that leaves is probably a few things like bedding, sheets, and pillows. Err. Hizashi looked at Hitoshi. Hitoshi's social battery was draining by the second and he was sure it was starting to show. Hizashi smiled. How about some lunch first? You look hungry and I just got a text from Aburo that he, Shouta, and Iri were at the food court. He couldn't stop himself from speaking in alarm. Breakfast and lunch. He never got three meals. Sometimes, under his uncle's rule he wouldn't even get one. Of course. Come on. Hizashi put a hand on Hitoshi's shoulder. Together they walked to the food court. The area was completely packed to the brim with people. Once again Hitoshi had to hold Moss to keep the cat from being trampled. It took them a good minute, but they would eventually find Aburo, Iri, and Shouta. Big brother, look. Iri excitedly jumped up and down, showing off her new colorful dress. A maroon red dress that, like the skirt Hitoshi picked out earlier, flared out. Isn't it pretty? It is. He complimented her and she giggled before running back to Aburo and Shouta. There were lots of bags from different stores surrounding Aburo. I see you two got a few things as well. Shouta smiled. Hizashi nodded and sat down. Here. He handed Hitoshi his card. Why don't you go and pick out what you want? He told the boy. I'll get something once I catch up with Shu. You can leave the bags here. Itoshi froze. Uh, it was just a piece of plastic, but it meant so much. Okay. He whispered and put his bags down by Hizashi. Then he shyly reached and grabbed the card. Thanks. Hizashi nodded and started to talk excitedly to Shouta. Hitoshi looked at Moss, who looked at him. Uh, he looked at the all the food options. Katsudan. He said off the top of his head and Moss nodded in agreement. Okay, I can do Katsudan. He got into line for the katsudan, got his food, paid, and started to walk back to Hizashi and the others. You know Moss, this is new. He told his kitty. I've, I've never been given this much freedom. He admitted. I'm sure you understand that. But, I know better than to get my hopes up too high. Sooner or later life will always kick me back down. He chewed on the inside of his cheek. Moss mewed, sounding like he disagreed with Hitoshi's statement. I don't know. Hitoshi shook his head. I I don't know. I feel like it's all going to come crashing down. That it's just too nice. You know, Moss looked like he understood. At least a little bit. Hitoshi looked over at the group sitting at the table. Shouta spotted him, smiled, and waved him over. I guess I should stop complaining and at least look on the bright side. Right Moss? Moss nodded and Hitoshi smiled. He then went and took his seat with the rest of them and he handed his ashy his card back. Bonus. Shouta placed Spicy down on the floor and unclipped the leash. Alright, you got 30 seconds to pick out whatever you want. He told the cat has placed him in the cat toy aisle of the pet store. Spicy looked at him, determined. Shouta pulled up his phone's timer and pressed play. And go. Spicy took off and he ran out of the cat toy aisle. Shouta tilted his head in confusion. What? He thought. There was some silence as he waited for Spicy's return. Well, before the 30 seconds were up, sure enough the cat came back, just not with what Shouta was fully expecting. Shouta grabbed the toy from Spicy. It was a dog toy. This toy was in the shape of All Might. 
I'm indestructible. Read the words on cardboard handle holding the toy up. This is a dog toy. You know that right? Spicy nodded. Shouta just shrugged. Okay, so, he got the cat the toy. Later on that night, whenever one was home around one in the morning, all three men would wake in a panic at the sound of their garbage disposal going off. Imagine their shock and slight horror when they would see sweet innocent Spicy shoving that very toy down the disposal. He really wanted to see if that toy was indestructible. Shouta hoped. They got approved by CPS. They were allowed to be permanent foster parents for the children, which was great and made all three of them, yes, even the stoic Shouta, happy. But, the good news didn't just end there. While the man we caught, Overhaul, got away from us, Barry isn't in his custody. She's in the custody of her grandfather, who is currently in a coma. We contacted her next of kin, her actual mother. She wants nothing to do with Erie and waved all her custody rights away. Meaning, if you desire later down the line, Erie is adoptable. If not, that's understandable and we'll bring in families to look at her for adoption. The social worker had told the three of them right before they left. It wasn't just Erie either, because of the clear physical abuse. He was shown to have. Hitoshi was also a ward of Japan. His cracked teeth, broken ribs, and spoon-sized bruises showed that Ju Shinsu should never be around Hitoshi again, though the man was still missing. It was great news and as much as the three of them wanted to just claim the kids up they decided it was best to wait. To wait to just be 100% sure that this was what they wanted to do, to get the children used to them, and not overwhelm the children. Besides, there was still a lot to do, like moving into their new home. Alright, our bedroom has already been taken. There are three rooms remaining. Go pick a room you too. Shouta physically pushed both children a step to get them moving towards a room. The house was a one-story home in a traditional Japanese style that did need a little TLC on the outside with the front lawn being overgrown, and the actual house needed some repairs. The sliding front door needed a new track because the old one that it was currently on made it stick pretty back. Ivy was also eating the outside of the house and crawling up to the roof. The inside fared pretty well, but there was an odor in the air. The smell of stale and old cigarettes and they could see some of the walls were tinted yellow, meaning some deep cleaning was in order. Which was fine, they weren't moving in today. Just picking rooms so the adults could make the measurements they needed. Can I stay in the same room as Big Brother? Yuri asked softly and she grabbed onto Hitoshi's hand. Well, Shouter rubbed at the back of his neck and looked at Aburo and his ashy they both shook their head. Unfortunately, sweetie, you need your own room. We know you love Hitoshi, but he's a teenage boy and he's going to what some time to himself. That's not to say he won't want to stay with you, it just means that both of you need some space apart. It's not healthy to stay together all the time. Eri frowned, but didn't put up a fight. It was like watching two curious cats walk around a new house. Both Eri and Hitoshi looked at every little thing as they approached the rooms. The adults hung back and let them look. While the children looked, Aburo leaned in and whispered softly. One of them is hoarding food. Shouta and Hazashi looked at him in surprise. But in all reality deep down, they knew they shouldn't have been shocked. Both children were homeless. It would have been more surprising if one of them wasn't hoarding food. I found the small hoard between the air mattress and the wall. It's not just the sweeter things either. I found some leftovers in Tupperware. Aburo shook his head. I think it's time for hound dog visits now that we know the children will be fostering with us permanently. Shouta and Hizashi both nodded firmly. Yeah, Shouta spoke. I think so too. Hitoshi had stopped his scouting and just seemed to stare at a door. Oh, Hitoshi, don't worry about that one. It leads to the basement. Shouta quickly told the boy. Hitoshi looked at him with a prominent frown and he looked like he was going to reach for the handle, but spicy. Who was wrapped around the back of Hitoshi's neck like a scarf, stopped him by patting the boy repeatedly in the face. Okay, okay. Hitoshi walked past the door. I get it. He walked onto another room. Which one do you think is doing it? His ashy asked in a concerned whisper. Well, the horde was beside Hitoshi's bed. While we don't know everything he went through under his uncle's rule it makes sense for it to be him. He was forced into a muzzle and you said it yourself his ashy. He was shocked that he gets multiple meals a day. However, I'm not putting it behind her either. We know little to nothing about what she went through under the Yakuza's rule. All we know was that she was cut up for her quirk. She could have been denied food the same as Hitoshi. It was clear they didn't care for her. All three men went quiet as they thought. Yuri walked back up to them. I picked a room. She told them rather flatly. Did you? Which one? Hizashi smiled and picked her up to hold the five-year-old on his hip. Yuri pointed and Hizashi, along with Aburo and Shouta, walked toward where she was pointing. Yuri had chosen one of the smaller rooms in the farthest right corner of the house, between the bathroom and another room. All right, we can make this work. Hizashi smiled at her. Just a small room with a closet for her clothing and toys. A pretty good pick for her. Itoshi poked his head out of a room. I I found one. He whispered causing the others to turn and look. Itoshi had chosen the second largest room in the home. Spacey with its own small closet. A nice pick. 
Naturally, Hazashi gave another smile to Hitoshi and Hitoshi suddenly blushed and scratched at his face. Spicy was no longer on Hitoshi's shoulders, but sitting in the middle of the floor. I picked it because I a dot 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 will dot 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 Masi found something. Show em, Hitoshi encouraged. Mas walked up to the left wall and put pressure on it. They were all suppressed when a secret compartment first popped up before sliding open. It's not that deep. Hitoshi squatted down and wiggled inside of it. While he was squatting with his knees to his chest Hitoshi was just barely able to fit inside and true to his words. It wasn't all that deep. He wiggled inside a little awkwardly and stopped once his back hit the wall. It was maybe five feet deep. If that. Huh, interesting. Shouta squatted down as he observed the area. I wonder what was hidden in here scratch that. I don't want to know anymore. He sighed. I do, however, wonder how many other hidden compartments could be in this area. He muttered and he tapped the wall next to Hitoshi with his knuckle. What are you going to do with it? He asked Hitoshi. Give it to Moss, of course. He needs a room too and this is perfect for him. Hitoshi picked Moss up. Even the cat looked stunned. Still, in the end, Moss just shrugged and accepted it. Hazashi leaned in. I guess you might be going back to the pet store to pick up Spicy a bet. He told Shouta in a bit of a smug tone. As long as that cat doesn't pick up another dog toy to shred in the garbage disposal. Though the toy said it was indestructible it was no match for the garbage disposal. And thus was beheaded. He tried to throw the toy out, but Spicy refused to let him. The cat played with it. Oh boy did he play with it. Hazashi caught Spicy just whacking the ever-loving shit out of the toy by bouncing it repeatedly off of the floor. Shouta found it in the litter box at one point. He didn't want to know how it ended up there. If they didn't know any better they'd all assume that Spicy hated All Might with how much abuse he was putting the toy through. But that was silly, right? Well, Shouta couldn't think too long nor hard on that as Abaro clapped his hands together. All right, rooms are picked, you all know what that means. The children shook their heads. It's back to the mall. We need to get you guys proper beds. You can't sleep on an air mattress now that you're staying with us full time. Hitoshi gave a groan while he did the same. Finally, children, Shouta could understand. Introverts like himself. Shame he couldn't save them from this. Barry doesn't smile much, does she? Abaro mumbled as he pulled his respirator down to speak to his two husbands. The three of them all scrubbing the wall to try and get the cigarette smoke and tartar build up off. This was their third wall now. They couldn't ask the children to help as the build up was so heavy and it stunk so badly that it actually started to give them. The adults, no spleets. So, they figured it was best for them to clean up the inside. You notice that too. To be fair, Hitoshi doesn't smile all that much either. Shouter responded and pulled his own respirator off of his face. Most of his smiles are sad. It's rare to get a good genuine smile out of him. Same with Iri. Hizashi nodded. Sad smiles if anything. It's like neither of them knows how to smile. Like they forgot. To be fair, I don't think it's the fact that they forgot how to smile. I think they both forgot how to be a kid because of the abuse they faced. Aburo counter and then he put his sponge into the bucket of vinegar and lemon water next to him. Because let's face it, they both faced horrible abuse that would make anybody forget how to be a kid again. So dot 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 we just have to remind them how to be a kid. How to smile dot 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 but how? Aburo pondered and tapped his chin. His ashy chewed on the inside of his lip. Well, they need to see something that tells them that it's okay to smile. Unfortunately, that type of thing isn't universal. Everyone is different, I would say. Let's ask them what's something they really want to do. But we all know that I might as well ask them a calculus question. They don't know. They were never allowed to do what they wanted. Shouta pulled his respirator right back up and went to scrubbing again. Aburo looked at Shouta and then at his ashy. The wheels in his head twisted and turned as he pondered on what to do. Then dot 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 why don't we give them a day? He suggested and made his partners turn to look at him. Give them a day. As Ashi tilted his head in confusion. A whole day. A day where they get to do what they've always wanted. Let's just drive around and do what they want to do. Let them be a kid. As Ashi seemed to weigh the options in his head, as was Shouta. That doesn't sound too bad. My only concern is that Hitoshi almost always seems to think that anything good is a trap. You didn't see him that day in the mall. Every shirt he picked out he kept looking at me. Not for approval, but because he thought I was going to snatch it from him and tell him he couldn't get it. He was deeply hurt and traumatized by his uncle. It's only natural he may push back on anything that may seem too good to be true. Because oftentimes, for him, it probably was. Shouta mumbled. He didn't tell me everything. He only told me the basics. His uncle forced him into a muzzle when he was eight and it basically stayed on every day until Moss saved him. His uncle never needed a reason to beat Hitoshi and, as we know, his favorite tool in doing so was a wooden spoon. That's all I know. But from my own understanding, his uncle never liked to spend money on Hitoshi. So, I'm willing to bet that any clothing he got were old hand-me-downs. Shouta explained. H.M. Iri is different but also the same. When we went shopping it wasn't that she didn't trust me, she just didn't know anything. 
I had to explain everything to her and what was what, which is concerning as she didn't know what very basic things were, like hats or even toys. I asked her if she wanted a Barbie doll and she didn't know what that even was. It was just so sad. Aburo gave his head a shake. All that's telling me is that that Yakuza was keeping her extremely isolated. How she got away is beyond me and I can only commend her for it. So, one is untrusting of adults and the other is, also untrusting, but just doesn't understand how things work or what they are. Hazashi hummed. How do we give them the best day of their lives with that knowledge? Shouta lowered his yellow stained rag into his own small bucket of vinegar and lemon water. He watched as the once clear water turned into a murky yellow. I don't know, but we'll think of something. I'm sure. I hope. Hey, Hitoshi Shouta approached the teen nonchalantly. Hitoshi was finishing putting down Moss's new bed. The cat was already laying down in his little cubby looking quite pleased with this outcome. He even stretched himself out lazily. Hitoshi's room was complete and it wasn't really all that hard to move him in as he, as stated before, had nothing before. Now he had a bed that was twin size with bedding that he chose himself. Black bedding with stars and moons splattered all over it. He had two pillows and pillowcases that matched the bedding. The bed was made up nicely and everything was in order. He also had a dresser for his, small, collection of clothing. The dresser wasn't anything fancy. Just a standard wooden dresser with four drawers. And that was all he currently had in his room. Save for Moss and the cat's new bed. Hello, Mr. Shouta. Hitoshi greeted him and Shouta rubbed at the back of his neck. You know you don't have to call us by our last names, nor do you have to call us Mr. We're your foster parents. You can call us by our first names. Hitoshi pulled a face of confusion. He then shook his head. I don't know. He whispered. Then he looked at Shouta. Did you need something from me? He skipped right to his question and Shouta just nodded. Yeah, I just need to ask you a few questions, just so we can get to know you. Itoshi nodded, silently urging Shouta to just continue. Okay, what do you like? Itoshi tilted his head in confusion. What? What do you like? Like, do you have any hobbies? So many questions Hitoshi was asked that he just didn't know the answer to. What fashion style do you have? What do you like? What in the world dot 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 was a hobby? He didn't know and every time he didn't know the answer to something like this the adults always get these sad looks on their faces. Like right now, Shouta was frowning. Okay, let me try this a different way. Is there anything you've always wanted to do? Or try doing? Shouta spoke again and it made Hitoshi think. Well, I've always wanted to be a hero but I know that's impossible. He shook his head. Moss jumped from his bed and started to aggressively smack his head into Hitoshi's ankle. Hey, Hitoshi called an alarm at his cat's sudden reaction. Seems like he disagrees. As do I. Why do you feel it's impossible for you to be a hero? Shouta inquired once he bent down to pick Moss up. Hitoshi looked down at his sock-clad feet. Isn't it obvious? My quirk. He shrugged half-heartedly and couldn't look Shouta in the eyes. It's a quirk for villains. And because of that eye. He then scratched at his wrist. That's not true. Shouta put a hand on the tip of Hitoshi's chin and made the boy look up at him by tipping his chin upwards. Your quirk isn't villainous and neither are you. You can absolutely be a hero with a quirk like yours. Hell, even if you didn't have a quirk, you can still be a hero. Shouta told him in a soft tone. Moss almost seemed to go limp in Shouta's arms for a second. The man might not have even noticed if Moss hadn't suddenly kicked himself free and took off running out of the room. Moss, Hitoshi whispered but didn't chase after his cat. Not with the tears growing in his eyes. Thank you, he whispered and he, for the first time, hugged another adult. He wrapped his arms around Shouta's waist, surprising the man. The funny thing was that this was something that Hitoshi didn't even know he wanted to hear until it was said. Thank you, Izuku huffed as he flopped pitifully down on the kitchen table. Nobody else was around. Aburo was currently on patrol and Hizashi was at his radio station getting ready to start his segment for Put Your Hands Up. Radio. So, it was up to Shouta to be watching the children as, from Izuku's understanding. Despite Shouta being a teacher he didn't have a class as he expelled them all. Izuku was okay with the silence and the lack of people, it made his moping a little more bearable. He wasn't upset at Shouta nor at Hitoshi. His anger wasn't directed towards them, more rather at his past. I never should have asked. He realized. Why'd I ask? Of course, he was talking about before he died, the last ever conversation he would have with his hero all night. No, you can't be a hero and not of a quirk. You have to be more realistic. But now, now someone else says you can be a quirkless hero. Everything he always wanted to hear. So why did it hurt? Because the sentiment wasn't directed toward him. Don't get Moss wrong. He's happy that someone is in Hitoshi's corner, that Hitoshi was told things Izuku wished he was told. But it hurt. Izuku could only rest his head on the table and sigh. Maybe it hurt because despite hearing what he always wanted to hear, it was too late. Izuku Midoriya was dead. Moss was a cat with no hope of ever being a hero. His ears and tail dropped. Ah, what's wrong, kitten? Rat easily hopped up on the kitchen table to meet with Izuku. Her long legs made it look so simple. She sat next to him and rested her spindly tail on his shoulder. It's nothing, 
he said though he wasn't very convincing. He wasn't even convincing himself. Brat shook her head and the next thing Izuku knew she was running her tongue along his head. Her sandpaper-like tongue swiped from the center of his head down to his ears in a few rapid strokes before she softly rubbed her head against his. I don't think you're being honest there. Brat told him and she flopped down beside him. Careful. Wouldn't want Pumpkin watching you do something without his permission. Izuku teased. Oh. Brat waved a paw at him like she was waving him off. Pumpkin is all bark no bite. Izuku got up and laid across her chest and Brat didn't seem to mind at all. You are so warm. She purred. I would die for a coat like yours. Your coat is pretty thin. You must be cold all the time. All the time. She chuckled and reached a paw up to boot his nose. He could smell the faint smell of kitty litter on her soft paw pad. At least these humans don't mind when I lay on their shoulders or between their legs when they sleep. Izuku picked up on it fairly quickly as his ear twitched. These humans. Meaning they aren't your original owners. Brad shook her head. Nope. My old family. Well, they didn't like how clinging I was to them, especially during the winter. They thought I'd be like a normal cat and they were upset. Especially when winter came. I just wanted some warmth because I was freezing. The humans kept pushing me away, so I tried to sleep under a lamp. I can't remember what exactly happened, but one thing lead to another and I accidentally knocked the lamp down, breaking it. Next thing I know I'm thrown outside of the house. Rat shook her head. It was snowing and I really thought I was going to die out there as I trudged through the snow. Izuku felt entrapped by Brat's story. He just silently nodded urging the cat to continue. With each step, my toes got colder and colder. The wind was hitting me in the face and soon I couldn't feel anything except for the cold that was seeping its way into my bones. Still, I was determined to find somewhere warm to sleep, even it was the last thing I did. Then, I hear it, it's too cold to be out here. Her voice turned gruff and Izuku had a pretty good idea who she was imitating. He picked me up and bundled me under his own clothing to keep me warm. He was the first human to know what to do for a cat like me. Heck dot 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 he was the first human to actually call me pretty. Most humans turn their noses up at a cat like me dot 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 even my old humans often made remarks about how ugly I was. I guess I was supposed to be a pet for one of their daughters and even she didn't like me. Izuku frowned before mimicking what Brat had done earlier and he lapped his tongue against her head and stopped at her ears. You're too kind, Brat murmured. She then twisted, causing him to move off of her. Brat laid on her back with her stomach and paws in the air. I've been living with these humans ever since. They're truly kind and don't care if I need to lay on them for warmth. She finished her story and then stretched one of her front paws up, extending her. Izuku sat up in alarm. Brat dot 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 are you to Claude? He asked aghast. HM. Yeah, old owners did it. I kept clawing the couch and dot 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 well dot 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 she sighed. It hurts a lot. Some days are better than others though. She whispered the last part and made a show of trying to extend and flex her non-existent claws. The only thing I can do is just to keep living with it. Yeah, I was dealt a harsh start, but that's not going to stop me now. She rolled over onto her feet and stood, stretching and arching her back. Cause, it's clearly not my time yet, and I'm going to make it their problem. They call me Brat for a reason, you know. She winked. Izuku looked at Brat and he puffed his chest out. Thank you, Brat. I've been given a gift basically and here I am moping about my past. Yeah, it sucked, but I was given a second chance with an incredible quirk dot 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 and I'm going to make it everybody's problem. Once he finished his proclamation, Izuku jumped down from the table and onto the floor. Izuku sauntered back into the bedroom where it seemed Shouta and Hitoshi were finishing up. Ah, look who's back, Shouta commented. Izuku was promptly picked up by Hitoshi. The boy held him like one would hold onto a toddler. Izuku was in his arms against his shoulder while Hitoshi had his arms wrapped around him. Moss, it's great. Not only am I finishing my middle schooling online, but I'm going to train hard to be a hero. I'm on going to go to UA next year. Later on that night, they were all getting ready to eat dinner when there was a knock at the door. Everyone paused and exchanges were shared. The exchange of did you invite someone? When everyone shook their heads, it was up to Shouta to answer the door. He peeped through the peephole through the door and rolled his eyes when he saw Nimari front and center. Okay, who blabbed to Nimari about the new house? He asked his husbands. Both Abra and Hizashi pointed at one another and Shouta resisted the urge to roll his eyes. He loved Nimari like a sister he's never had before. The issue was simply the children. He knew Nimari would never do anything to harm them, but the kids might not know that and be scared by her loudness and overtly sexual nature. Still, Shouta unlocked the door and opened it. Nem, surprise, Shouta nearly fell back in shock as the entire hero staff of UA was at his doorstep. Yes, this included All Might in his skinny form, with Nedzu on his shoulder, because of course Nedzu was. In fact, Shouta was sure the rat was the one to plan this, not Nimiri. Everyone had food packed away in Tupperware and all looked in high spirits. What in the world? Aburo inquired as he stepped up to the doorway. House warming. Nimiri declared loudly and happily and she, without another word pushed her way into the house. She paused at the sight of the children. 
Hiri wiggled out of her seat and rushed into Hitoshi's arms when more and more people walked into the house. Hiri clung to Hitoshi like a lifeline. She whispered into Hitoshi's ear why are they all here? To take us away. To which Hitoshi replied. No, I recognize some of them. They're heroes. Good guys. Nimari looked between all three men before grabbing Shouta's ear and then grabbing Hazashi's ear. I don't have a third arm. Tashinori, grab Aburo's ear for me. She demanded. Tashinori, looking a little uncomfortable moved his Tupperware of food to lightly grab onto Aburo's ear. Once Aburo was secured Nimari hissed. What the fuck? Children. Nem. Those would be children. Shouta whispered to her. I'm aware of what they are. When did you guys get children and most importantly she tugged harshly on both his ashes and Shouta's ears alike to show her ire. Why wasn't I informed that you have children? She whisper yelled. Sorry, Nem. Aburo spoke softly next. It all happened so fast between us fostering them and us getting the house. We were going to get settled in before we told you. I swear. Nimari pouted with a soft HMPH. Leaving her throat she released Shouta and Hazashi. To which Tashinori released Aburo. She then turned towards the children with a turn of her heel. You're adorable. She carefully walked to the children. Can I get your names? Itoshi was tensed up and he was clearly grinding his teeth a little. Shit kid, don't do that. We have yet to get you to a dentist for those cracked teeth. Shouta thought as he watched this. Itoshi put a protective arm over Eri, who snuggled close against his chest. Oh, Nimari whispered upon seeing these reactions. The rest of the staff started to come in. Nezu jumped from Tashinori's shoulder and approached Hitoshi curiously. Don't crowd, please, Shouta advised the other adults. Hitoshi looked ready to bolt from the room as he started to shake. Clearly, there were too many adults in the room for his comfort, so, it wasn't surprising to hear Hitoshi finally speak one word. M. Moss, he cried for his cat. Moss, Nimari inquired a little confused. She then turned towards Hizashi for an answer. His cat, Hizashi explained to her. Support animal. Well, like the dutiful cat he was, Spicy slowly emerged from the bedroom. Wow, what a pretty cat. Thirteen was the first to notice him. Spicy yawned loudly before stretching himself out. Yes, quite a specimen. Nezu spoke as he turned to look at the cat for himself. What a coat. I've never seen one with green fur. Kashinori smiled and Moss froze. Then, it was on sight for Moss. Moss hissed out, his fur bristling up and his back arched as he stood on his toes. For a moment Shouta was worried that Moss was hissing at Nezu with the principal being a giant white rat and all. But no, Spicy charged and went straight for Tashinori of all people. The cat grabbed onto Tashinori's pants leg and refused to let go. Whoa, are you sure this thing is a support animal? Tashinori asked, a little bewildered as he hopped back in shock, lifting his leg in the air. Spicy dangled in the air, a fierce growl leaving his throat as he refused to let go of the blonde. Moss, Itoshi had to put Eri down as he rushed to grab his cat off of All Might's leg. Spicy was not letting up as he doubled down and clamped down harder on the pant leg, snarling and growling the whole time. Moss, stop it, please. There was a ripping nose and Spicy was free from Tashinori's pant leg. The same was said for a good chunk of the fabric that ripped free as well. Spicy was truly pissed as he acted more akin to a dog and started to violently shake his head from side to side with the cloth still in his mouth. Then, like it was on purpose, he spat the cloth back at Tashinori and hissed directly at the man. Itoshi actually had to hold Spicy out in front of him with his hands under the cat's arms. I'm sorry, he's never Hitoshi tried to apologize for his cat's sudden and bizarre actions. But Spicy, clearly not done snarled, his ears going back, eyes dilated into angry slits, he tried to swipe at the man, like this man had personally wronged him. A yowl of aggression left his mouth and Hitoshi had no choice but to flick him. The flick was harsh and directly against Spicy's nose. Stop it, he demanded and flicked the cat again. What has gotten into you? Moss's nose twitched in alarm as his pupils expanded. Then dot 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 his temper tantrum was done. Whatever had upset the cat to such a degree that he had to tear the number one hero's pants. They didn't know. Moss just simply climbed up to Itoshi's shoulder and sat. He was now the vigilant support animal. Though his ears were back and his eyes were trained solely on Tashinori. Jeez, Tashinori, what a do to the cat. Snipe leaned in to ask the blonde. I didn't do anything. He gave a nervous laugh. Spicy's eyes narrowed. Well, he's not a full-service animal yet. Shouta tried to rectify the situation. He's still a little spicy towards other humans. Spicy, Tashinori inquired. He's still slightly feral. I guess something about you must have triggered him. Nedzu was grinning. Shouta hates it when Nedzu grins the way he was grinning now. It meant that the rat knew something. Something they didn't. Why, isn't he cute? Nedzu asked as he approached. Instantly several people raised their hands to stop him before he met the end of Spicy's claws. But surprisingly, Spicy allowed this. He let Nedzu pet him, even scratched him under the chin. There wasn't so much as a growl from the cat. So, Nimari tried it next. Spicy allowed this. He allowed it when everyone wanted to pet the strange, yet angry, green cat. Everyone except Tashinori. 
The man had the balls to try and pet Spicy and what he got was a yowl and another attempt at being hit. Huh. I guess dot 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 it's just you. Abaro had a hand over his mouth and it was clear that he was trying hard not to laugh. Spicy hissed. Nanzu's ears twitched. How interesting. The principal whispered. So dot 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 yeah. These are our fosters. Shouta said as he showed his children off for the staff to see. Itoshi and Iri. They're under our custody solely. Spick Moss is Hitoshi's cat. I see you guys brought food. If you want we can get more chairs and we can all eat together. Of course, if that makes you children nervous you can opt to eat somewhere less crowded. He told the kids quickly. Both Hitoshi and Iri looked at one another before looking at Shouta. We can try. Iri answered for both of them. So, the whole staff all crowded around the table taking up chairs to eat. Of course, they ran out of normal chairs pretty fast so a couple of people got folding chairs. The food was opened and the questions were asked. Hitoshi was quick to shut his mouth and really refused to open it even if he was spoken to. Too many people caused him to clam up, even with Spicy there to help him. Hey, recovery girl, can you heal cracked teeth? Aburo suddenly inquired as he perked up. Hitoshi's front teeth are all cracked. HM, let me see. Recovery girl came up and Hitoshi kept his mouth shut. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. I just need to see the damage. Hitoshi put Spicy directly in his lap and held the cat close. But he complied and shyly opened his mouth. The woman had to pull him down and pull his lips back to see the damage for herself. How are you not in pain? She seriously asked as she looked at each tooth. She sighed at Itoshi's lack of an answer. Well, this is out of my jurisdiction anyways. I excel the healing process of a wound and his teeth looked far too damaged to be healed by me. However, I know a dentist you can send him to. She walked away and jumped into her seat. Itoshi nodded at his lips nervously, almost to the point of bleeding. Very seemed to be just as nervous. Still, Hitoshi didn't want to be seen as rude to these people. So, he shyly scooped up a small bit of food from a Tupperware. He didn't know who brought it, but it looked like some sort of fried rice. Moss suddenly perked and sniffed at the air. Oh, I made that. Tashinori explained. Moss suddenly jumped on the table and actually tried to knock Hitoshi's chopsticks out of his hands. Moss, please, quit being rude. Hitoshi told his cat as he gently picked his cat back up. I'm sure it's fine. He grabbed some and went to put it in his mouth but was shocked when Moss knocked the food off of his chopsticks. Moss, he scolded the cat and picked him up before putting him on the floor. Seriously, what has gotten into you? Moss let out an obnoxious wail at this. Itoshi grabbed another bit of food and bit into it this time without his cat trying to stop him. He chewed and swallowed with ease. He let out a cough when the food had a bit of a spicy taste to it. Still, it was good and he went for another bite, despite his cat jumping into his lap. Itoshi quickly set the cat back down on the floor. Stop it. Itoshi hissed to his cat as he continued to eat. By the fourth or fifth bite, Hitoshi started breathing heavily. Hitoshi, Shouta asked and the adults all noted how heavily Hitoshi was breathing. Soon his breathing turned into wheezing. What Hitoshi leaned forward as he was finding it harder and harder to breathe. Hitoshi, Aburo was beside him in a heartbeat. The man patted his back harshly. Are you choking? What's food? Hitoshi tried to communicate but all that came out were more wheezes. He pointed at the rice. Tashinori. What's in the rice? Aburo demanded. It's just shrimp fried rice. Shellfish Hitoshi grabbed onto Aburo for dear life to get the man to look at him. He even grabbed Aburo's face with both hands. He then pointed to himself frantically shellfish allergy. Kid, I love you, but you really have to tell us something like that in advance. Hang on. Aburo made a cloud and lifted the two of them up. Shouta opened the door. I'll take him to the hospital. Shouta did as requested and soon, Aburo, Hitoshi, and Moss were swept out of the door. Moss gave one last hiss to Tashinori. I didn't know. Shouta Tashinori quickly said and Shouta shook his head. Neither did we. We don't eat a lot of shellfish. Mainly chicken, regular fish, and pork. So, you aren't blamed for this. However, Moss was trying to warn him. Yes, Nedzu said almost happily. He was. That cat tried many times to tell Hitoshi not to eat the rice because he smelled the shrimp in it. Tashinori why are the shrimp cut is my question. Surely regular shrimp would have warned Hitoshi not to eat it before it was too late. Nedzu held up the shrimp in his palm. It was just a little cube in a perfectly cut square. All eyes were on Tashinori. Because dot 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 that's how the store sold it. He tapped his fingers together nervously. I haven't cooked my own meal in eons. He finally admitted shamefully. Nedzu popped the little shrimp pieces in his mouth before turning to Shouta. Whenever Hitoshi is feeling better, bring him by Yue. Tim and Moss both. I have many questions. You want to ask a cat questions? Powerloaded gave a soft chuckle at the idea. Nedzu turned to his employee. Yes, because that's no ordinary cat. I can see it. He possibly has the same quirk as me. Hyperintelligence. So, I want to talk to him. Hyperintelligence. I mean yeah. He tried to warn Hitoshi about the shrimp, but did you forget what he did to my pants? Tashinori flashed his ankle for Nedzu to see. Shouta even said it himself. That cat is still feral. 
Yes, but trust me, Tashinori. That cat is far from feral, distrusting. Maybe, but he's not feral. Not by a long shot. He knows things no normal cat should know. Yeah, like what? Like your injury and the fact that you're all might. There was a silence that fell in the room. Everyone just looked from Tashinori to Nedzu. Nedzu was smiling. He was trying to climb up your leg to headbutt you right in your injury. But young Hitoshi stopped him. He also knows who all of us are along with our quirks. That is no ordinary cat. Nedzu stood abruptly. So, yes, whenever Hitoshi gets better. I would love to question him in Masa like, please. Yeah, sorry, it's an overnight stay. It's just a precaution because his throat swelled. And they're worried his symptoms can return. Aburo told Shouta over the phone as he grabbed a cup of hospital-grade coffee. I'm going to stay with him during this time. Yeah, I understand. Stay with him. And let him know we're not upset with him dot 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 but also let him know that that was something we needed to know before he had an allergic reaction. Shouta softly requested and Aburo could hear him moving about. No doubt getting ready to lay down for the night. Yeah, I should probably apologize for my reaction as well. Saying I love you but might give him the wrong impression that I now no longer love him over this. Aburo sighed and he sipped at his coffee before grimacing at the taste. It certainly wasn't the good coffee they have at home. Oh, get this. Apparently, Nedzu understands spicy. Aburo nearly spat the coffee right back out. What? He gasped. I know Nedzu is smart but he can understand cats. Um, yes and no. I don't know everything. But all I managed to get out of the rat is that he knew Spicy was communicating with Hitoshi. He thinks Spicy may have an intelligence quirk like him. He wants to meet with Spicy and, yes, ask the cat questions. How wait dot 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 he knew Spicy was trying to communicate with Hitoshi. Meaning he could understand Spicy, at least, right? From what I understand, yeah. Meaning he heard Spicy trying to warn Hitoshi not to eat the rice because it had shrimp in it and stayed quiet. There was some silence. Uh, you know, I didn't think about that. But you know how Nedzu is. He probably wanted to see if the cat was right, even if it was at Hitoshi's expense. Aburo snorted. Yeah, it tracks. He re-sipped his coffee. I guess we should see about getting Hitoshi an EpiPen. Just so next time it's not such a close call dot 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 how's Yuri? Scared, she doesn't understand what happened fully. I'm concerned about her reaction. Which was, she thought she had done it. She thought it was because of her quirk. She thought that she was somehow rewinding Hitoshi even though her quirk wasn't going off. She's scared. Aburo frowned at those words and then sighed sadly. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking. I know you said you want her to talk to Hound Dog. And while Hound Dog does have credentials to be a therapist, I think maybe we should get a child therapist for her. Hound Dog is great for Hitoshi because Hound Dog works with teenagers. But Ari might be out of his league. You're right. I'll look into some child therapists tomorrow. For now, go be with Hitoshi. Yeah, he's probably wondering what's been taking me dot 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 or he might not care. He has spicy. By the way, did Nedzu say why Spicy went on a rampage against All Might? No, but dot 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 and get this. Spicy knows everyone and their quirks, and he knows that in his skinny form Tashinori is still All Might. You're kidding. Do I ever kid? No, Shouta Aizawa did not kid. At least he didn't kid in a way that didn't involve some sort of emotional damage. Aburo sighed. What are your thoughts on it? Do you still think Spicy is pretending to be a cat? Honestly, no. Spicy has spent too long for him to be someone with a transformative quirk. Most people with transformative quirks have a time limit. It's been weeks now and either he's really good at hiding when he transforms, or he's just a really smart cat. I'm pretty sure it's the latter. Aburo whispered and he started to walk toward Hitoshi's hospital room with some hospital food on a tray. I've never seen a cat like him, nor have I seen a cat as feisty as him. Yeah, there are feisty cats out there, but one that solely targets the number one and tears his pants. Crazy. Shouta hummed sleepily. Well, I'm still curious about Spicy, if anything Nenzu added fuel to that curiosity. I'm probably going to ask him questions as well whenever he and Hitoshi get back. I don't blame you. I have questions for this cat, but... Aburo came up to the room and peered through the window. Spicy was resting on Hitoshi's lap with Hitoshi lazily scratching between the cat's ears. I'm going to hold off for now. Good choice. Well, I have a patrol in a few hours and I need to take a quick nap. Of course, I love you in Hizashi. And we love you too. Shout abounded from rooftop to rooftop. It was a bright and beautiful day and he had just gotten started on his patrol less than five minutes ago. Usually, Shouta was one for the night shifts as seen in his almost all blackened outfit, save for his yellow goggles. This was different. He had to take the day shift because he needed the night shift off. Aburo had some big dinner planned for them tonight. Jumper, out of the corner of his eye, Shouta spotted the jumper just a few buildings up on one of the tallest buildings in the area. It was rare to see a jumper out in the day. Most jumpers would try at night, with fewer people to stop them that way. This jumper looked young and skinny from what Shouta could see from where he stood. Hang on. He started running along the rooftops at a fast rate. He was getting closer to the higher rooftop. 
The closer he was getting he was able to make out little things. The hair, fluffy and green, was too skinny for Shouta's liking. I'm almost there. Just hang on for a minute. Just a minute. He was coming up from behind. This person looked young even from behind. They stood on the ledge of the building. Papers were strewn about and flying in the wind. Shouta had to leap from the rooftop he was on, use his scarf to grab onto the flagpole hanging off of the end of a window, and propel himself up toward the roof of the larger building. He took his eyes off of this kid for just a second as he flew up in the air. But he was too late. The kid was gone. All that came was the loud sickening noise of a body making contact with the ground below. This was followed by a horrific scream from down below. Shouta's legs moved on their own as he walked to peer over the edge of the building. On the ground below the child lay. The back of his head was blown wide open leaving a gory puddle below him. His eyes green were still open staring up at the sky above. If not for the bloody puddle growing in size from under him, and his nose now starting to slowly trickle blood, he almost looked alive, just laying on the ground because teenagers like him were unpredictable in their actions. But no, he was dead and Shouta couldn't save him. He was just a minute, maybe less, too late. Shouta just stood there for way too long. Way too long. There was just something familiar about those green eyes staring back at him. Those dead eyes just stared endlessly at the sky. Those brilliant green eyes. He felt something rub against his leg and looked down at the green cat that was rubbing needily against his leg. Wait a minute. The cat looked up at him, opened their mouth wide, and spoke. The voice was raspy, like one a chronic smoker would have after years of inhaling cigarettes, but it was also a whisper, a sinister whisper. And despite the cat being on the ground, Shouta heard this directly in his left ear like it was a secret. You better stop before you get answers you're not prepared to know. Shouta sat up in alarm and he panted heavily. He swallowed hard and with a shaky hand, he pressed his palm against his mouth as he tried to calm down his racing heart. He didn't even know why he was so scared. He rubbed at his face vigorously and looked at the time on his phone. He had 30 minutes until he was initially going to wake up before his patrol. Well, might as well get up now. He decided and rolled out of bed. Hazashi mumbled in his sleep but didn't wake. Pumpkin did wake and even glared over at Shouta daring to disturb his slumber. The cat turned his back to Shouta and then made himself into a loaf before returning to his sleep. Shouta shook his head and quickly, but still quietly, got himself dressed for his patrol. He finished getting dressed and went to check on Ari first and foremost. He poked his head into her room and looked at her bed. Only she wasn't there. He rose an eyebrow but didn't panic. Instead, he walked from her room and over to Hitoshi's. Sure enough, when he opened the door he found her laying on Hitoshi's bed under the covers. She even had one of his hoodies clutched tightly against her chest as she slept, showing early signs of codependency. Of course, she would, she's been isolated all of her life. Then again, so has Hitoshi. She also witnessed Hitoshi having anaphylaxis. She's scared. He softened before shutting the door gently. Shouta went into the new kitchen and opened up the cabinet for a thermos. He was going to bring himself some coffee for the patrol. He turned on the coffee maker and let it run. The air was quickly filled with the scent of freshly brewed coffee and he sat at the dining table while waiting for the coffee pot to fill. He spotted some skin peeling off of his fingers and started to pluck at the irksome skin. While he did this, his mind wondered. His mind wandered back to that day. The day he failed a 13-year-old boy. The day he witnessed a child take their own life because of their status. The day he had to deliver the news to Inko Midoriya. This was always the hardest part of being a hero. The part that schools don't teach you. The part that happens when you fail or you're the hero who found the body. This part. Shouta knocked on Inko's door with two officers right beside him as witness. He could smell dinner being cooked on the other side of the door. Something was being fried, for sure. After a few seconds, it didn't seem like he was heard, so he went for a second knock. He never got to knock the second time as the door quickly opened. Sorry, Inko Midoriya, the mother of Izuku Midoriya. She wasn't even looking at him or the officers. Her head was turned towards the kitchen. I had to lower the stovetop temperature she finally turned and blinked in alarm. Can I help you? She asked a little more nervously. Shouta swallowed hard as he showed her his license. My name is Shouta Aizawa. Eraserhead is my hero name. I need to speak to you regarding your son. Izuku, he said in a soft, almost gentle tone to the woman. Inko looked even more confused. Izuku, did something happen? He's a good kid, I can assure you. She jumped to her boy's aid and Shouta put a hand up. You might want to sit down ma'am. Did something happen to my baby? She asked her eyes misting up while her lower lip quivered. Miss Midoriya, he had to keep himself calm, regardless of the fact that he saw this boy's dead body less than an hour ago. We have some bad news regarding your son, unfortunately. With a shuddering breath, tears were already falling from this woman's eyes. The officer beside Shouta handed him the yellow backpack that was found at the scene. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but your son Izuku is dead. He jumped to his death. He handed the backpack over to her before bowing with respect. The other officers did so as well. No, she whispered. No, then she bent over and started to sob. 
Her sobs started small, disbelieving, and turned louder and harsher with each cry. Tell me you're joking she grabbed onto his jumpsuit with a shaking hand. Please tell me you're joking. She wailed with desperation and Shouta shut his eyes and swallowed hard. I'm sorry. No. The woman fell to her knees when her legs could no longer hold her up. No. No. She wailed again, taking in a deep breath to scream. A scream from a mother that would never hold her son again. A mother that lost her one and only child. A scream from a broken woman that reverberated through the hallways of the apartment complex and one that would cause nosy busybodies to poke their noses out of the doors to see what all the fuss was about. A scream that Shouta should be used to hearing as a hero, but a scream that would never fail to break his heart every time. Shouta looked over at his coffee maker and saw it was finished brewing. He got up and poured the entire contents of the pot into his thermos. A nice shot of whiskey would do this good. He thought and did think about doing it but changed his mind in the end. He cleaned up any mess and threw the coffee grounds into the trash. He put a fresh filter in coffee grounds in the pot and filled it with water, but didn't let it brew. No, that was for Zashi and Naburo. He walked out to the backyard. Well, that would be their background. But right now it was a small forest with grass that grew up to shout his knees. It would need some work whenever one of them got a moment to do so. He sipped his thermos of coffee and then twisted his neck to crack it. It was a peaceful night with crickets singing and the moon out as clear as the sun. He took a longer swig of his still hot coffee before nodding. All right, let's do this. He grabbed his scarf and off into the night he went, the racer head signing on. He called into his comms ready to get his day going. He would be on patrol from 10 at night all the way until 7 in the morning. And from 7 in the morning he'll be at UA until 5 at night. Don't pity him for his lack of a sleep schedule or for how long he works. It was his choice to be this busy and now with two children to take care of he was happy to work like this to make sure their needs were met. About last night, Hitoshi scratched at the back of his head as Aburo checked him out of the hospital. Moss was resting across Hitoshi's shoulders, perusal. I do really want to apologize, he whispered. I was going to tell you guys, honest. He told Aburo as the two of them walked towards the parking lot. Hey, now we know. Though, on behalf of all of us adults, that's something we should have known before you had a reaction. I know it's all a lot to take in and you're nervous, but if you have any other allergies we need to know so we can properly avoid triggering an allergic reaction. Hitoshi ducked his head down. Not that I know of. Just shellfish. Okay. Dazuri. Hitoshi shrugged and Aburo just nodded before bringing Hitoshi into a sideways hug. I also owe you an apology for how I reacted last night. I was upset at the situation, not at you, he told Hitoshi. Hitoshi gave a small smile at this and actually leaned into Aburo's hug as they walked. Oh, I owe Mas an apology also. I'm sorry for scolding you. I realize now that you were just warning me. Mas simply patted Hitoshi's forehead twice as if saying we're good before laying back down across Hitoshi's shoulders and lazily stretching his claws out. Good, now that that's all sorted out how about some breakfast? Then I have to stop by the drugstore to pick up your EpiPen. A what? An EpiPen dot 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 you know what that is, don't you? Hitoshi shook his head. Oh, an EpiPen is just a device that in case you have another attack we have that on hand to inject you with. However, you'd still have to go to the hospital. It's just to pause the symptoms. Like we have that last night we could inject you and we could have driven to the hospital and not taken one of my clouds oh speaking of which. Aburo used his quirk to make a light and fluffy cloud right in front of them. He jumped on the cloud and sat crisscrossed. Get on, he ordered. Uh, Hitoshi looked a little nervous. But then Moss jumped from Hitoshi's shoulder and directly into Aburo's lap and he looked at Hitoshi as if he was trying to say, Come on, you're going to be alright. Hitoshi was still hesitant but stepped onto the cloud regardless. He looked amazed that the cloud was able to hold him up as he stood on it. He constantly looked at the ground and then back down at the cloud. This is cool, he whispered. You might want to sit, Aburo instructed and patted the area next to him. It's kind of like standing in a car while it's moving. It's just easier if you sit. Hitoshi understand and shyly sat next to Aburo. Aburo smiled and put his goggles on over his face before handing Hitoshi a spare set. Here, these are just swimming goggles, but they're doing you the same. It's just to keep dirt, debris, and bugs out of your eyes while flying. Hitoshi looked at the swimming goggles and put them on as instructed. Once he was safely situated Moss jumped into his lap and snuggled up close. Then with a jerking motion, they were in the air. Whoa! Hitoshi gasped in alarm and tightly held onto Moss as he watched the ground get farther and farther away. For just a moment he held onto Aburo's arm and freight while keeping Moss against his chest. Then, when he looked down he, he felt okay. He watched as all the buildings passed on by, how the people went along their day without a care in the world, they were hardly even noticed. He looked down at the ground below. They weren't high up enough to meet the clouds, but they were high enough for the people to look tiny. Itoshi untangled himself from Aburo's arm and cautiously peered from over the edge of the cloud. Are you even allowed to do this? He asked the man with a coy smile. I know a bit on the law with quirks. You're not on duty, therefore, this is technically illegal. 
Aburo looked at Hitoshi out of the corner of his eye and smiled. I like you. He wrapped an arm around Hitoshi and pulled him into a hug. Yeah, I technically can't be doing this but I'm number 8. What are they going to do? Nothing. That's what. Hitoshi felt at ease on Aburo's cloud and no longer felt afraid as they flew. What do you want for breakfast? Aburo asked and kept an eye out. It was so strange. What did Hitoshi want for breakfast? Meaning dot 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 he could have what he's almost always wanted for breakfast. Can we have McDonald's? He whispered. Sure. Hitoshi couldn't help it he smiled at Aburo. His smile made Aburo smile. We need to see that smile more often, kiddo. Nedzu wanted to see them and time didn't matter to the rat. So, shout up, Aburo, Hitoshi, and Izuku all walked in while Hizashi hung back to watch Uri at home. It was nearly 6 p.m. and Nedzu looked excited when they walked in. Hello, he greeted all four of them. Hello, Hitoshi bowed in greeting. He was the only one to do so. Shouta just sat and so did Aburo. Hitoshi sat between them in his own chair and let Izuku rest on his lap. How are you feeling, Hitoshi? Any better? Yes, loads, thank you. Tea. Cookies? The chimera asked as he pointed to both the tea kettle sitting on all table beside them. Small puffs of steam left the neck of the kettle showing that the tea was freshly brewed. Next to the kettle and cups were some butter and tea cookies. No thank you Hitoshi shook his head. But Izuku suddenly jumped from his arms and onto Nedzu's desk. The cat sauntered over to the other smaller table, which was in reach of the principal's desk, and he happily helped himself to a butter cookie. Walking back he sat in Hitoshi's lap and munched away. I've always wondered what these tasted like. Izuku thought as he ate his cookie. Nedzu gave a small smile as he tilted his head and watched Moss. I must say, for someone acting polite now, you certainly had no problem cursing at Tashinori. Izuku stopped his eating and he slowly looked up at Nedzu as if he was saying who? Me. Because there's no way Nedzu understands him. Well, Nedzu treated it like the cat had just said that as he calmly said. Yes, you. Nobody else in this room had the brazeness to attack Tashinori the way you had. Then again, I'm sure if you weren't a cat he wouldn't allow it. Izuku's felt his ears go flat as he narrowed his eyes at the chimera. I don't care if he would have allowed it or not. Cat or not, I still would have attacked him. Izuku spoke because, again, there was no way Nedzu understands him. Right. How interesting. Nedzu mumbled. Is there a reason why? What did Tashinori do that causes you so much distress? He grabbed the tray of cookies and pushed it towards Izuku. Izuku blinked slowly and owlishly as he just stared at Nedzu. Can you understand me? Nedzu nodded. I can. That's refreshing. Izuku couldn't stop himself from saying it. It almost felt like a bit of a relief and he relaxed just a little in Hitoshi's lap. Hitoshi reached up and patted Moss between the ears. Is everything okay, Nenzu? Shouta asked next. Oh, yes. You see, Moss is just surprised that someone can understand what he's saying. The I. Nenzu opened his paws up and invite for Izuku to get closer to him. Izuku shyly and slowly left Hitoshi's lap. He walked up between Nenzu's hands and Nenzu used his claws to gently scratch behind Izuku's ears. Now, I have a few questions for you. Are you really a cat? Yes, I think. I. I just woke up like this. There's no way for me to transform back well. There's no body anyway. Nenzu blinked. What do you mean by that? I'm dead. Technically, my human self is, this much I know for sure. Izuku sighed and sat on the desk. So, now I'm Moss. Nenzu frowned at this. I don't understand. That makes three of us. Aburo whispered earning an elbow to the side from Shouta. Nenzu, what is he saying? Shouta asked. Nenzu looked at the three of them then back down at Izuku. Can I? Izuku shrugged. Well, he says he believes he's a cat, but he was human at one point, but his human self is dead. All three of them perked up visibly. Moss, if I may ask, do you remember your human name? Nedzu asked and turned towards his computer. Maybe that'll help us understand. Maybe you're just stuck in this body due to your quirk. Izuku shrugged again. I don't think so. I was quirkless when I was human, but if you think it'll help. My name used to be Izuku Midoriya. Nedzu stopped dead in his tracks. He blinked a few times and just looked at Moss. What? He almost whispered. Izuku Midoriya. That was my name before I died. Nedzu's eyes went from Izuku then directly to Shouta. Shouta sat up at his employer's gaze. Nedzu looked back down at Izuku. Did he say something, Nedzu? Shouta asked. A name? No. Nedzu lied making Izuku's ears perk up in surprise. No, just that he likes the name Moss. One step at a time I suppose. So, you have all your memories of when you were once human. Izuku didn't vocalize, he just nodded to the principal. I see. Now, it's my understanding that you found Hitoshi, not the other way around. What leads you to him? Another cat. She knew he feeds cats and she pointed me in his direction. H.M. Hitoshi. This question is for you. When did you first meet Moss? Hitoshi scratched at the back of his neck. Two months. Nearly three months ago. I was feeding the local strays when he came up to me. I've never seen a cat like him before. Nedzu started to type on his computer. How interesting. 
I'm curious about your intelligence. Moss, I was originally going to give you a small test for first graders and escalate from there. However, I think I can say you'll pass it. Just to be safe one plus one. Two. Okay, you pass. Nedzu continued to type. I have much to research about you. For now, Hitoshi, Shouta, Aburo. Be safe with him. Do not let the HSPC know about his existence. If they know that there's another animal out there, one like me dot 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 well dot 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 he may suffer the way I have. My advice is to get him chipped, collared, and most importantly papered to be a service animal. Get him a proper emotional support vest, not this fake one. Cupcake was emotional support to me. Aburo sighed softly. And just know what you have is no ordinary cat. This is a cat that has memories of its past life. This cat almost might as well be human from what little I managed to get out of him. He gave his head one more shake and pushed Moss back towards Hitoshi. I look forward to seeing him again. I'm already typing out another test for him to try. This one is a little higher in the academic department. Hitoshi opened his arms and Izuku happily jumped into them. He would then scale up to Hitoshi's shoulder and sit down at ease. Is there anything else? Shouta asked as the three of them stood up. No well dot 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 one more question for Moss. Why'd you do it? Izuku looked over at Nenzu. Do what? Nenzu only stared with a sad smile. Why did you attack Tashinori? Because all might crush my dreams on a rooftop. Because dot 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 if not for him and one another person, I might still have my body today. I see. Thank you. You all may go. Bonus. Hazashi woke up from his little cat nap to eyes watching him. Nothing new as he lived with four cats. Yet, he still wasn't expecting it when he turned to Siri just staring at him. She was speaking, but he couldn't hear her. Hold on he tried to tell her and rose a finger up to stop her. I'm deaf. He fumbled for his hearing aids charging on his nightstand. He popped the first one in and followed it up by the second one. He sat up and blinked in surprise when he saw Iri holding a tiny kitten. A kitten that they didn't own. In fact it looked way too young to be away from its mother. Their eyes were closed and showed no signs of opening. Where'd you find that kitty, Iyer Bear? He asked her and picked her up to sit into his lap. I didn't mean to do it. She sadly lowered her head. I just wanted to pet him. Hazashi saw tears and felt confused. What do you mean? He asked her gently while patting her hair. I'm sorry. She cried and when she jerked around with the kitten in her arms the kitten mewed uncomfortably. I'm really really sorry. Don't hate me, sweetheart. I just don't understand what's happened. Please, just explain it to me. I wanted to pet him. She held the kitten up for Hazashi to look dead on. An orange tabby kitten. An orange tabby pumpkin. He whispered in surprise while he reached out to take the kitten. I'm sorry. He recovered her face with her hands clearly ashamed. She started to cry high-pitched cries. I didn't mean to do it. I really didn't mean to. Her horn flicked and Hizashi had to quickly do damage control before she used her quirk on accident again. No, no. Hizashi told her softly and pulled her into his chest in a hug. It's okay. It was just a mistake. He looked down at Pumpkin, the kitten fitting in the palm of his hand. Just a mistake. He repeated. I'm going to have to go to the store to pick up kitten milk dot 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 and get her on suppressants until she can gain some control. He realized and then smiled and gently ran his fingers through her long hair. Come on dot 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 don't cry. Hazashi reached up with his free hand and thumbed her tears away. Let's go and get dressed and go to the store together. Okay. He told her. We can go to the store to pick up some kitten milk for pumpkin and then we'll go for dinner after pumpkin had his. Here he sniffled. You're not mad. It was a mistake. Besides, maybe Pumpkin will be calmer a second time around. Yeah. Now, let's go before Pumpkin gets hungry. We're going to have to feed him a lot more often now. The others are not going to believe this. Harry needed to be homeschooled because of her isolation and Hitoshi was schooled online as past experience with horrid teachers and classmates alike. It also didn't help that the only middle school that had openings this late in the year was Aldera Middle School and Shouta heard horror stories about that school. So, online schooling was the best option for both children while Iri got extra classes. However, as new parents, the three of them, all hit their first snack. Because the children are homeschooled someone had to watch them and they have seven jobs between the three of them. So, it was decided. You're coming to UA. Already, Hitoshi gasped in alarm at Shouta's blatant tone. Shouta chuckled and rested against Hitoshi's doorframe. You're not getting admitted just yet, but we need to keep an eye on you and Iri both in case either of you need help. Or something happens, so we talk to Nedzu. You can rest in the teacher's lounge while doing school work. Naturally, Nedzu allowed Spicy to come as long as he has his vest. Hitoshi nodded and Shouta could see the stars in the boy's eyes as well as excitement. I also want to utilize the gym and get you started on training. Hitoshi was almost vibrating at this point at the idea of his dream just being a step closer. Shouta then looked over at Spicy. Spicy was asleep in his bed. I have to ask, are you weirded out by what Nedzu said a few days ago? About Spicy basically being human. Hitoshi made a so-so motion with his hand. I mean, I understand why most would be confused, upset, or even betrayed by that fact, but not me. 
I've always known Moss was different from other cats. I think deep down, a part of me even saw him as a human. As weird as that may sound, he's not a pet to me. He's a friend and has always been as such. Itoshi explained and turned to look at the cat with Shouta. Not only that but he saved me. If not for him, I might be dead right now. Yeah, I understand that. Shouta scratched at his face. You know, he might need his emotional support human coming up. Itoshi turned and narrowed his eyes in confusion. Why? Because he has a vet appointment tomorrow. I don't know how he'd take to such a thing. Itoshi grinned. Maybe the doctor can tell us his quirk. Shouta hummed and thought while lowering his hand from his face. Maybe. For now, let's just see how he takes to the idea. Shouta's phone dinged as the timer suddenly went off. He looked at it. Two hour mark. Gotta feed pumpkin. Itoshi snorted. I gotta ask. How do you feel now that your massive street cat has been reduced to a mewling kitten? Shouta smiled in return. Honestly, it's a lot less noisy now that his highness has been knocked down a peg. Tiny Tim, Brad, and Jelly all seem a little confused as they just look at him while he eats. It's like they can't understand it. They probably don't. Shouta then left to go and feed his highness. I don't need a vet. Izuku wailed while he struggled against Shouta's hold. The man had to wrap him up in his capture scarf because they thought it would be okay to tell him that this was where they were going while in the car. Izuku was usually found at the doctor's office, but this was different. He was a healthy cat and he knew that cats cats like him cats that had their jewels often walked out without those jewels. Moss, it's okay. Itoshi tried to reassure him. No, you're not neutering me. Izuku dramatically threw his head back and wailed as they walked into the vet's office. No, no, this is cruel. Inhumane. You heard Nezu. I'm basically human. Release me. Izuku wanted nothing more than to bat at Shouta with his paws but he was wrapped up tightly like a little burrito. Goodness. The receptionist laughed as they approached. We're here to see Dr. Soom. We had an appointment for ten. Shouta told the woman. Hitoshi reached up and scratched Izuku between the ears. It's okay, Moss. It's just a checkup. He told his crying cat. Izuku's wailing stopped right then and there as he looked at his human with the utmost betrayal. He could have started with that. He yelled at Itoshi though all that came out was a growl. Itoshi smiled softly at him and continued to scratch behind Izuku's ears, but the knowledge that he was not going to be neutered. Izuku allowed himself to relax inside the waiting room, though he wasn't released from his cloth prison, which was fair. They were soon ushered into the vet's office not too long later. The checkup was just that. A checkup. Izuku was released from his prison and allowed the vet to inspect him. A healthy weight for a handsome man. The vet complimented Izuku and checked the inside of his ears for mites or ticks. I do see some fleas. I would recommend flea baths and some medications. The vet advised. We suspect he's quirked. Do you think you can do a blood test? Shouta had heard that for some animals if they're quirked the quirk could be detected through blood. Of course, we'll do that before we get him vaccinated. Just a small bit of blood. No worries. The vet reassured Izuku as they patted him gently. It was strange being pat with latex gloves on. Izuku felt a pinch on his haunch and he hardly flinched. It was a little uncomfortable but nothing unbearable. There's a good boy. Such a good cat. The area was soothed by the vet's hand. He wasn't earlier. Shouta huffed only mildly amused by Izuku's attitude change. Alright, let's just get him those vaccines, get him chipped, and call it a day. He was given three other vaccines. Rabies, FVRCP, and a vaccine to help prevent leukemia. Though Izuku was pretty sure his quirk would prevent leukemia but better safe than sorry. Alright, seeing how the paperwork for the microchip was done in an advance online, let's go ahead and get this little guy microchipped and call it a day. Izuku was pushed onto his side the area between his shoulder blades was pulled up slightly and he felt another pinch of feeling he was growing used to. The chip was inserted and Izuku was free to go. Here you go. The vet picked Izuku up and handed him back to Hitoshi. Boss is a good name for him. He complimented and Hitoshi gave a bashful little smile back. I thought so too. Izuku clambered up to Hitoshi's shoulder and rested along the area. Have you calmed down from your temper tantrum? Hitoshi coyly asked while reaching up to pat Izuku once more. If you just would have said that this was a checkup I wouldn't have freaked. Okay, so for your question on the quirk, we'll have the results in about a week. The vet told Shouta. His fur is probably going to get longer. I would recommend getting his fur shaved in the summer to prevent overheating. The doctor continued to speak to Shouta. It'll also help with matting as his fur is curly and can easily mat up. Okay, no problem. That's all for now, here you go, for being a good boy. The doctor reached into his coat pocket and pulled out a little treat for Izuku. Izuku more than happily took the treat from them and then relaxed fully. You can pay at the receptionist. They would do just that. Once paid they were freed and carried on with their lives, though, not before Hitoshi posed a question to Shouta as they were walking out. Is it wrong that we microchipped Moss considering what Nedzu said about him being human? It does feel like a bit of a moral dilemma, doesn't it? Shouta posed while scratching Izuku between the ears. But, it's like Nedzu said. 
This way the HSPC doesn't get suspicious of him. Hitoshi hummed in thought and then nodded. Yeah, I understand. Even if it is a little strange. You look pretty. Uri exclaimed as she walked up to Hitoshi. Hitoshi was wearing the hoodie and skirt combo, along with the chunky combat boots. He blushed at her. You think so? He asked with a blush. I never wore something like this before. Yeah. Iri reached up and Hitoshi acted on instinct and picked her up. Straighten your hair out and you'll look like a girl. Hitoshi thought about it. Huh. I'll take that into consideration. He told her and then he sat down on his bed with her in his lap. How are you taking all of this? He asked her after a pause between the two of them. It's great. She looked at him but didn't really smile. They're all really nice. They don't punish me the way Kai did. How would he punish you? He asked and he realized all too quickly that he asked a question he didn't want to know the answer to too late. He would use his quirk on me and then bring me back. Hitoshi felt pale as he simply pulled her into a hug. The image of Moss exploding into a spray of blood kept replaying into his mind over and over again. Now, instead of Moss, it was replaced with Eerie. A little girl being nothing more than blood on a wall only to be brought back with a snap of his fingers. Well, I'm sure these people will never do that to you. Even if they could. Eerie gave him a sleepy smile and then rested her head on his chest. I'm glad I found you, big brother. You and Moss both. Yeah, I'm glad you were there at that dumpster that night too. He grinned before holding her close again. I'm glad you're safe. You too, big brother. Can I paint your nails? Depends. On what? Do you have black? I have purple. Close enough. It was decided among the three adults that despite Hitoshi being schooled online they wanted him to have some social interaction amongst his peers, him and Ri both. It was after dinner. The table was cleaned. Pumpkin was fed. And now the two children were looking up at the adults with curiosity-filled eyes. We've decided that it would be best if you two joined a program. This is both for social reasons and to help get you guys outside of the house. As Ashi stated softly as he put pamphlets in front of the children. From the couple pamphlets, Hitoshi spotted he saw various sports programs, a couple of programs for quirk analysts, some fan clubs. None really appeased him. Eri just looked confused as she looked at the pamphlets in front of her. These were more for little girls, Girl Scouts, something called Smart Girls, which was more for science and math, dance. Hitoshi slyly pulled that pamphlet closer to him before opening it. It was a bunch of different dance programs including, but not limited to, hip-hop, ballroom, ballet. Ballet. Would it be pushing it if he asked for such a thing? Mr. Shouta told Hitoshi that during the next few months they were going to work on his core and get him flexible because soon he was going to be training with the same capture weapon. LA is perfect for core training and, most importantly, control. At least that's what Hitoshi was trying to tell himself. That it's totally not because he loved how the dance itself looked and always wanted to try it for himself. I'm confused, Uri whispered finally. What are these things? As Ashi got down next to her and carefully explained what a program was and why one might benefit her, her confusion did not wane. Maybe it's a little too soon for Iri. Itoshi heard Aburo whisper to Shouta. HM, maybe. I just want her to have social interaction. He whispered back. So, Hitoshi, have you chosen anything? Aburo asked while Hazashi continued to patiently explain to Iri what each program does. Hitoshi felt his cheeks redden. Uh, well, I really like. He whispered the last part almost embarrassed. Aburo tilted his head and patted Hitoshi's shoulder. What? He asked gently. I didn't quite catch that. Hitoshi read it even more, if possible, and tried again. Bah, ballet. If possible, I know it's for girls, but it's good on core strength, posture control, and just control in general. HM. That's really smart. Aburo patted Hitoshi's hair. Ballet is also great with balance and your balance is key when working with Shouta's capture scarf. However, I don't think we'll sign you up for this class. He lightly tapped the pamphlet. As this is for little girls ages 6 to 8, I'll look into teen classes. Hitoshi blinked. Just dot 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 just like that. He whispered almost alarmed. Isn't what you want to do? Shouta asked as he came up to Hitoshi. Hitoshi nodded. It is dot 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 it's just. He blushed again. Ballet is often for girls. Kid, Shouta got down so they were eye to eye. I used to do ballet. Not only that but I can also tap dance, but that's beside the point. Girls don't have a claim on ballet there are plenty of dancers out there. Dancers. Male ballet dancers. They have a name, the same as ballerinas. It's like clothes. Yes, it's populated by girls, but that doesn't mean it's only for girls. Shouta explained softly while moving a stray piece of Hitoshi's hair out of the boy's face. You do ballet. Shouta nodded. I do well did. So, trust me, you can absolutely do ballet if that's what you want to do. Hitoshi bit his lip and then gave a nod. I do. I really do. Okay, then we'll get you started as soon as we can. Iri looked at the programs in front of her. Her quirk suppressing bracelet jingled with this movement. Can I do the same thing as Big Brother? She asked innocently. You want to do ballet? Aburo asked her as he handed her the pamphlet that Hitoshi just had in his hands moments ago. It's quite strenuous. He warned her. 
If Big Brother is doing it, then I want to do it. She decided firmly. Abaro smiled. All right, two ballet dancers. This should be interesting. Shouta gently cupped Hitoshi's shoulder and rubbed his thumb against Hitoshi's shoulder blade comfortingly. Training is going to start soon. I'm warning you now, it's going to be intense. Don't get discouraged. Hitoshi shook his head. I won't. I promise and I'm ready. I'm going to be a hero. I know you are. Which is why as part of your training, we're also going to train your quirk as well. Hitoshi shouldn't be surprised, but he was, right dot 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 my quirk. He whispered and looked at his hands. You're going to do great things, both of you. Shouta reached over and touched Iri's hair. Because both of you have amazing quirks. Iri breathed out softly and her eyes went wide in surprise. You think my quirk is amazing? Even after I accidentally turned Pumpkin into a kitten? Yes. Shouta was gentle when he touched her face next. I stand by what I said. You both can and will do amazing things with the quirks you were born with. We're going to help you control your quirk he turned to Hitoshi. And we're going to help you be confident behind your quirk. Hitoshi just didn't know what to say as he stared down at his hands again. Then, he smiled sadly as he felt pressure behind his eyes. Thank you. He clutched at his pants. Thank you. Shouta wasn't kidding. The training was grueling. Shouta didn't hold back when teaching Hitoshi basic self-defense, weightlifting, and schoolwork. Regardless, Hitoshi didn't give up, he couldn't. He pushed himself harder and harder each and every day. As the months trickled by Hitoshi started to see a change in his body. His biceps got bigger, he started looking less like a twig as he packed on the muscles. He even saw the outline of a six-pack forming. Will I still be pretty with a six-pack? He thought one day while he brushed his hair and looked at himself in the mirror. He then shook his head vigorously. What am I saying? Then he continued on, but the thoughts didn't stop. Some days they were subdued, but other days he couldn't describe it he felt a little more in touch with his feminine side. He liked the idea of being pretty, but he also liked being masculine. A part of him wanted to go to Hizashi about this strange dilemma, but he didn't want to bug the man with dumb questions when he himself had a million things to do if he were going to the entrance exam. Then, before he knew it, he was weight training, learning self-defense, doing schoolwork, and learning ballet. Hitoshi was a little embarrassed when he walked into the dance studio, a brand new duffel bag hanging off his arm, in a black leotard and black tights, and wearing simple full-sole shoes, in black thank goodness, for beginners, not the point shoes. Point shoes shouldn't be worn until the person had at least three years of consistent ballet training. Hitoshi feared that he would be the only boy in this class and get laughed out of the studio by the teacher and other girls alike. Then he was surprised to see that he was not the only boy in the class. There was another boy. A boy with short honey blonde hair and steel blue eyes. This boy honed in on Hitoshi the moment he stepped into the studio. Like Hitoshi, this boy also wore a leotard. Of course, only his was a full-body leotard that extended into pants. He also wore ballet slippers only his were beige. I was wondering when another boy would join this class. The boy smiled and stepped up to Hitoshi. Though he looked surprised when he spotted Moss, who poked his head up and out of Hitoshi's duffel bag. A stowaway. He smiled. Isn't he cute? Moss did not look impressed as his ears went back. That's Moss. Hitoshi whispered. A support animal, I see. Anxiety. Hitoshi nodded. Yeah, Mono Manito. The boy then introduced himself with a polite bow. Hitoshi. Hitoshi whispered his own greeting and bowed. He didn't like his last name as it always left a bad taste in his mouth. Monoma suddenly wrapped an arm around Hitoshi's shoulders and pulled him in like they'd been long-time butts. Uh, this is your first class, right? Monoma asked. Yeah, great. It's my first class as a teenager, but I've been a dancer since I was six. I know almost everyone in this class as a result and let me tell you who to trust and who to avoid. Avoid? Hitoshi whispered in surprise. Is it that serious? Now? No. Come time for plays and auditions? Yes. They will sell you out if it means they get the spotlight. Oh, that's no problem. Hitoshi laughed a little. I'm just here for training. Not for shows. Doesn't matter. Monoma pulled Hitoshi in just a little tighter. There are those in this class that will be nice to your face and then turn around and twist your words to the teacher just so they can get glanced at. Is it that serious? He whispered now feeling nervous about joining such a class. Yes. Hitoshi narrowed his eyes at Monoma. I'm no fool. How do I know you're not one of these people? He suddenly changed his tone to a more accusatory one. It must be hard being the only male until today. Monoma cracked a smile. I like you. He poked Hitoshi's cheek affectionately. I'm also like you. I have no desire for shows, though. I do deserve to be in the spotlight. No, I have a bigger spotlight to chase. Monoma turned on all the dramatics as he released Hitoshi and started to make grand gestures with his hands. To be the next number one hero. That's why I'm here. That's what I've been training for since I was six. Hitoshi clapped his hands. Bravo. He smiled. I'm also here to be a hero. This is just to help me with my training. 
And you know, we're not the only ones. You see her monoma pointed to a girl that was their age. She was wearing a more typical female ballet leotard. Light pink with white tights underneath. Her black hair was up in a high bun on her head and she, unlike the others, had point shoes on showing that she had the experience to do so. This girl almost could have been mistaken for the teacher. She had elegance and grace written all over her. That's Momo Yeyurazu. I've been doing ballet since six. She's been doing it since she was four, or so I've heard. Wanama told Hitoshi softly. She's also training to be a hero at Yue. She's one of the good ones. She won't sell your soul for a corn chip. Hitoshi looked at the other girls then back at Monoma. Which one should I look out for then? He softly asked and Monoma grinned. I thought you'd never ask. Ballet was not simple. Ballet was not for the weak. Ballet was a legal form of torture. But it was helping, and Hitoshi was sure of it. So the pain, learning to dance on the very tips of his toes, the raw rubbing of his toes against each other, was worth it. Every bit of pain was worth it in his mind. It was helping him in his training. It helped him keep his posture correct when trying to use the capture scarf. It helped his reflex when dodging Shouta's attacks. So, Hitoshi stuck it out. He endured the pain. Soon, spring would meld into summer and the days got hotter and the months continued to move on. Training became more rigorous and Hitoshi was getting better and faster. In class, he was also excelling. He wasn't anywhere near the level of Monoma or Momo, who were leagues ahead of him and the other, real, beginners. But he was getting better. He was learning how to hop and jump while still remaining on his toes. And dot 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 he was even making friends. Yes, human friends. Monoma was great company even if he could be a bit dramatic at times. When needing a partner they would choose one another more times than not, which would lead to some funny moments between them. Namely when Hitoshi would have to lift Monoma up. There were times when the teacher would make Hitoshi choose a girl partner. That's where Momo came in. He wanted someone with that experience, someone to help push him to be better. She would correct him on where he needed to be better if they were partners. She would tell him how when he would dip her how he needed to move his hand farther up her thigh and not keep it so low because he could drop her. When lifting her in the air she would critique his method because he, out of politeness, would have his hands on her waist and not her hips where they needed to be. Most people would take this as slander. They would take it that she was telling them that they weren't good and that she was better than them, but not to Hitoshi. He took everything she told him to heart and made himself better. Finally, one night he approached her right before we're to end. He got down in a bow and simply requested teach me. And she did. She saw the drive in him. So, he had extra ballet training. She helped correct his form and his posture when he would slip. She was a genius and the thing Hitoshi didn't even know he needed until this moment. Her extra lessons aided Hitoshi when it came to training with Shouta, Aburo, or Hizashi. He didn't think it was possible, but because of Momo, he was able to dodge Shouta's capture weapon. Hitoshi became so involved in his training and everything else that he hardly thought about his past at all. His uncle was nothing more than a faded memory for the time being, just for this brief busy time in his life. Hell, he forgot about one major thing. Hazashi had picked him up from practice that muggy July night. Hazashi was speaking animatedly to Hitoshi, but Hitoshi was hardly listening as he went through dance steps in his mind and practiced his feet movements while sitting down. Still, he was polite and smiled back, maybe nodding to his foster parent. They got home and Hitoshi walked up with Hizashi to the house. The house was looking better than when they first moved in. Though, it was dark inside telling Hitoshi that everyone had already tuckered for the night. Hitoshi got to the door first and walked through. He went to flick the light on. Surprise! Hitoshi grabbed onto his chest as he stumbled back into Hizashi in pure alarm. They're standing with his foster dads, Iri and Moss was Monoma and Momo, Midnight, Nedzu, and Tashinori every one of them blew on their little party blowers, the ones that rolled out and squealed obnoxiously. Hizashi laughed while hugging Hitoshi tightly. You didn't think we forgot about your birthday, did you? He asked while lightly moving Hitoshi from side to side. Uh, he breathed out unable to fully comprehend. It's my birthday. Yes, Hitoshi was so wrapped up in his training, ballet, and schoolwork that he forgot his own birthday. It's July 1st, isn't it? Shouta asked as Hizashi helped walk Hitoshi up to the cake. It was a gorgeous cake with a reflective glaze that almost made it look like outer space as it was a deep shade of purple with little white dots all over it. I. Hitoshi put his hand to his mouth as tears collected in his eyes. He felt so overwhelmed but in a good way. He couldn't describe it. When was the last time I was allowed a birthday? It was before dad died so when I was six. The adults all paused Hitoshi started to cry. I'm sorry. I, I haven't had one in so long I just I just never expected I didn't think I ever get a party again. Moss jumped from the table and onto his shoulders. He then rubbed against Hitoshi's face with a deep purr to help soothe the boy. I'm sorry I don't mean to drag everyone down Hitoshi sobbed while covering his eyes. I'm just I'm happy. That's what I'm trying to say. He cried while bringing his hands down and smiling. There was silence before suddenly he was hugged by his ashy. Suddenly Aburo and Shouta are hugging him as well. Iri joined in as well and Hitoshi picked her up to hold her on his hip. 
He wiped his tears with his free hand while the others broke off. Shouta put two candles on the cake. A one and a four. He was fourteen and he couldn't believe it. Itoshi moved some of Iri's hair out of her face while Shouta lit the candles. Help me blow the candle out. He asked her and she beamed at him and nodded. Together they both blew out the candles and cut the cake. It was the best cake Hitoshi ever had. Then again, it was the first cake he was allowed to have in six years. It was sweet and rich. So rich that Momo actually had to stop eating it, along with most of the adults, but Hitoshi didn't care. And apparently neither did Moss as he took a bite. Moss, no, that's chocolate. Hitoshi tried to chase his cat down. But Moss's mind was made up and he got himself a nice healthy piece of cake for himself. I think he'll be fine, Nenzu told Hitoshi. He has that healing factor. He then whispered so only Hitoshi could hear. I think so too, Hitoshi said with a smile. Come, we got you presents. Monoma grabbed Hitoshi's arm like an eager kid and he hauled Hitoshi towards the present table you'll like mine the best? Naturally, Monoma boasted his usual way. He plucked a present wrapped in cat wrapping paper and thrust it in Hitoshi's arms. Open it, you'll love it. Hitoshi laughed. Okay, okay. He sat down at the table and unwrapped it. It was a dark purple leotard. It's the best on the market. Comfortable and breathable. It's resistant to tearing and is stretchy, meaning you don't have to get a new one every month because you're gaining muscle like crazy. He teased and squeezed Hitoshi's arm. It was very much needed. His old leotard was becoming taut and Hitoshi was getting ready to request a new one. Thank you. I did need a new one and this is perfect. Top that, Miss Perfect. Monoma stuck his tongue out at Momo. Momo smiled at Monoma. I'm sure he'll like my gift just the same as yours, Monoma. She walked over effortlessly to the presents and picked her out to hand to Hitoshi. There you are. I hope it's to your liking. Hitoshi smiled at the wrapping. Again, it was cat-themed. He unwrapped it and opened it up. He was surprised to see new slippers. They were canvas shoes in black in color with a split sole. These are split sole. I made them myself. She nervously played with her hair. They're made with the toughest, but most durable material to avoid too much wear and tear as I could see that yours are starting to split at the seams. Yes, he's been training a lot harder with his double ballet lessons so it was only natural that his original pair started to show damage. It was something else he was going to tell the foster parents but never got the chance to or was it courage? He wanted to make sure everything was completely unusable before asking for new shoes, but yet his friends had picked up on it without saying a word. Monoma and Momo both saw that he needed new clothes and quickly took up the mantle for themselves. Thank you. They're lovely. I'll wear both your shoes and he turned to Monoma. And you leotard next class for sure. Moss came back and jumped onto Hitoshi's lap. He still had frosting around his mouth and Hitoshi grabbed a napkin to help clean him. I think Moss wants to give you his preset next. Aburo said and picked out a gift from the table. The cat picked out a present. Tashinori asked, astonished. Yes, yes, he did. Shouta stated firmly. He seemed adamant about getting you this. Wow, you didn't steal, I'm shocked. Hitoshi gasped in fake surprise. Moss's ears went back and Hitoshi booped his nose. I'm joking. He happily took the present and unwrapped it. It was a book. Hitoshi blinked and looked at the cover. How to expand on your mental quirk. The title read, Huh. He mumbled and was surprised when Moss grabbed the book from him and slammed it on the table. Moss had to use his face to open the book. He quickly used his paws to leaf through the pages. What in the world? Monoma whispered. That's no ordinary cat. It is not. Momo agreed. Moss got to the page he wanted and patted it multiple times. Hitoshi leaned down and started to read out loud. There are many mental quirks out there, so many that we cannot name them all. However, every quirk that requires some sort of mental link, be it moving limbs, mind control, or just glancing into one's memories, they all have one thing in common, they require the user to link and connect to the other person. I've seen many people do this. However, what few know is that they can. Hitoshi trailed off. He read the passage again, then a third time, a four time, and finally a fifth. What? Aburo asked while peering over Hitoshi's shoulder. What is it? Hitoshi looked at Moss then back at the back. If this book is right, with the right training, I can read minds. What? Aburo quickly leaned down to read the passage for himself. Let me see that. Shouta took the book from Hitoshi and quickly read the same passage. He moved on from the passage and flipped it to the next page and continued to read. Holy shit. It is possible. If this manual is to be trusted that is. It can, Nenzu stated with a haughty little laugh. And it's absolutely possible for young Hitoshi to expand upon his quirk to read minds. At least the minds of those he can link to. Hitoshi looked down at Moss. Is that what you want? You want me to read your mind? He asked while opening his arms. Moss jumped into his arms and looked up at Hitoshi with a nod. Then he mouthed. He says he also wants you to expand on your quirk as much as possible. Nenzu translated. This is still your present and he wants you ready for UA as much as possible. Mind reading is just a bonus. That cat only meowed once and he said all of that. Tashinori asked Nedzu softly. Moss's ears lowered and he hissed. 
Oh my, better not repeat that with children present. Nenzu chittered a little laugh. Expand on my quirk to be able to read minds. Itoshi whispered while looking down at Moss. I, I think I can do that. He scratched behind Moss's ears. If it means I can finally hear what you have to say. Moss reached a paw up and gently patted Itoshi's face. His paw pads were soft and smooth against Itoshi's face. It was almost like a human trying to cup his cheek. Okay, we have more presents to open. Aburo declared. From me. He put his own present on Hitoshi's lap. Go on. Aburo's present was a set of nail polish. All different shades of purple, black, and blue. But all of them are darker shades. It was perfect and he was going to use that for sure. Next came Hizashi's present. It was this beautiful sun dress. It was off the shoulder and it was horizontally striped with thick gray and black stripes, not unlike a prison uniform. Later on at night when Hitoshi would hold the dress up to his body to inspect it, and would inevitably put it on, he saw it would go down to his mid-thighs. A little short, but nothing a pair of tights and some shorts couldn't fix. I love it, it's beautiful. He told Hizashi. There's more. Go on. Hizashi urged. There was a black choker with a moon pendant I'm putting that on now, can you help me, please? And a pair of dark black pants. He loved it. All of it. Mine next. From your favorite aunt. Nimuri snatched her present up and handed it to Hitoshi. It was tiny and Hitoshi wasn't surprised to see it was a gift card. He was however surprised to see it was a gift card to a makeup store. Now, I'm aware you haven't ventured into makeup yet. But if you do you'll have some of your own. I'll take you next time I have a day off. She offered and he smiled. Thank you. This was a lot. It felt weird being the center of attention. Not that he hated it. He loved all the gifts and everything. It was just foreign. Still, he continued to smile. Er, I guess I'll go next. Tashinori offered his present up. He had to quickly step away after dropping the present off as Moss had gone on the offense and swatted at the man threateningly. Geez, what you do to piss the cat off? Monoma asked with a smile. I don't even know. Tashinori sighed with a headshake. I think this cat was born hating me. Hitoshi opened it. Another gift card. This one was for video games. Hitoshi didn't have the heart to tell Tashinori that he didn't play video games. He didn't have the time to play video games. Still, he was grateful regardless thank you. He chirped. Nenzu was next. Books. A pile of books, academic books. These will help you in the future, Nenzu advised. I'd read them quickly. He sipped his tea without care. Hitoshi quickly caught on. These were for the entrance exam and Nenzu was giving him an immediate advance. Thank you, I will. Okay, the best for last. Shouta grabbed his present and put it in Hitoshi's lap. I hope you like it. Hitoshi opened it. Is this? He whispered amazed as he pulled out a scarf. More specifically a capture scarf. One identical to Shouta's except in color. His was a deep shade of purple. It is. It's functional to mine in every way. Shouta explained while feeling his own capture weapon. And it's yours. Hitoshi's eyes were brimming again. Thank you. He cried while touching his cheek to the scarf. I'll put it to great use. I swear. I know you will. Happy birthday. Shouta patted Hitoshi's hair. Happy birthday. Everyone yelled at once. Merry Christmas. Iri yelled excitedly from Aburo's hip and Aburo smiled at her. Not quite. Wrong celebration dear. It was the best birthday Hitoshi could ever ask for. Deleted scene. His ashy left his lipstick out. It was just sitting there on the bathroom counter and Hitoshi was spying on it up and down like it was going to move. It was a brilliant red shade from what he could see by the bottom of the cap. He just wanted to see the color. So, Hitoshi picked it up and uncapped it. He unfurled it and watched as a shiny crimson red greeted him. His face matched the color as he wanted so badly to see it on himself. But it wasn't his and he could just put his lips on someone else's lipstick. That was unsanitary. It was like kissing Hizashi on the mouth yuck. Still, he tapped his finger to the side of the lipstick where Hizashi hadn't put his lips on. The tip of his finger stained red. He brought his finger to his mouth and touched his lips. He spread the pigment along his lips and then rubbed his lips together. H.M. He thought while looking at it in the mirror. Nah, the color wasn't that good. His pale skin made the red pop out too much. Is that my lipstick? Hizashi asked as he walked into the bathroom. Itoshi was caught red-lipped. I didn't put my lips on it, I swear. He yelled while in his panic he threw the lipstick at Hizashi. Hizashi gasped while he quickly scrambled to catch the lipstick. Itoshi rushed out of the bathroom in a flurry of movement. Never again. He thought while in the safety of his own room. First bonus. Okay, maybe eating that cake wasn't such a smart move on Izuku's part. Izuku retched profusely into the litter box. The reason he was in the litter box was because it wasn't just vomit. He was absolutely sick to his stomach. His body was shaking horridly as it was trying to fight off the poison that was chocolate. I bet you're regretting that cake now. Shouta smirked as he leaned against the doorway. Izuku felt another wave of vomit come up and his whole body seized as he expelled his last meal. You're just lucky Izuku paused with a groan. I don't have a middle finger anymore. I bet you're cursing me to the high heavens right now. But you knew you couldn't ingest chocolate and ate that cake anyways. 
It was like he was scolding a child. Well, Izuku wasn't a child. He was still a cat. Izuku looked Shouta dead in the eyes and stepped out of the litter box. Shouta narrowed his eyes. He wouldn't dare. Shouta growled in a challenging voice. Izuku walked up to the carpet. His mouth started to salivate as another wave of vomit was threatening to overtake him. Don't you? Izuku vomited right on the rug. Worth it. Bonus. Pumpkin was two months now. He was walking and talking. They expected ire and anger. But all of the other cats were surprised. Mom. Pumpkin ran up to Izuku. Play. I am so confused. Brat whispered as she and Izuku sunbathed on the kitchen table with Tiny Tim and Jelly. Pumpkin's little orange paw patted the end of the table as he tried to get up from the chair, but was just a tad too small to get up on the table with the rest of them. Mom, play, play. Pumpkin tried to jump, only to grab onto the edge of the table and dangle like he was Mufasa during the stampede. Who's mom again? Jelly asked while she cracked an eye open. I know it's not me. Not me. Brat shook her head. Izuku sighed, got up and walked over to the edge of the table. Pumpkin's eyes lit up. Mom, play, play, he demanded. All because Izuku made the mistake of just being too close to him as he was being bottle-fed and he wound up imprinting Izuku as his mother. I'm not your mother. Izuku grabbed Pumpkin by his scruff and put him on the table. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but perusal. It went one ear and out the other as Pumpkin jumped around playfully. Izuku sighed and lay down on his side to continue sunbathing. Pumpkin continued to jump around and demanded to play. Fine, let's play rocket ship. Izuku sighed weakly. Pumpkin stopped. Rocket ship. Yeah, it goes like this Izuku. Using no effort, reeled his hind leg back and Pumpkin stood no chance as he went flying back when Izuku pushed him away. There was blissful silence. Again, Izuku groaned. Summer melted away into autumn and with the change so did the leaves. Hitoshi had four more months until the entrance exam and he was studying his butt off. He read every book Nenzu gave him for his birthday, twice, and made sure his grades were spectacular. It was so much better being online. No teachers to snap at him for even opening his mouth. No students to push or kick him. Just a teacher who had no idea what his quirk was and who was willing to grade him the same as if he were an ordinary child. Hitoshi put so much work into study, school work, ballet, self-defense, and capture weapon training that he would often find himself falling asleep in random places out of sheer exhaustion. Once he was playing with Brat on the living room floor by wiggling a string in front of her, then the next thing he knew he was being woken up by Moss rapidly tapping his face. Moss, the dutiful cat he was, would then lead Hitoshi back to his bedroom. The most embarrassing time he fell asleep randomly was when he was eating dinner with everyone else. Everyone was talking to one another then boom. Hitoshi was out like a light, chopsticks still in hand. The good news was it wasn't narcolepsy because the very next day he was swept away by Hazashi to a hospital. Just exhaustion nothing more, nothing less. They talked about lessening the load, but Hitoshi refused. I'll rest when I'm the hero course. Until then I'm going to keep going. That was his compromise, which made Shouta smile fondly. So, he kept going until the leaves had completely fallen off of the trees and the snow was just threatening to encompass them. December had rolled fully. One day, Aburo knocked on Hitoshi's open door to get his attention. Hitoshi was just finishing reading up on Nedzu's English book and he looked up at Aburo. What's up? Yuri's birthday is coming up. Hitoshi perked and he put the book away. Is it? Yes, it's the 21st of December. Oh, she's almost a Christmas baby. Hitoshi gasped. He never knew her birthday and something told him or he didn't either. He and Uri were alike in too many ways when it came to their abuse and isolation. Only, Hitoshi's isolation wasn't as intense as hers. At least she's getting better about things. Yeah, I know. So, what party do you think she'll like? Aburo asked and Hitoshi crossed his legs on the bed. HM. Good question. I know she's getting better about learning and is knowing some basic things, but I wouldn't suggest a party at an arcade or anything like that. Too many kids and she still doesn't understand everything. He added, so I would definitely do what you did with me. A surprise party. Aburo nodded. Agreed. We have some ideas for presents but know you probably want to get her something. Hitoshi thought about it. I just can't think of what to get her. What do you give someone who doesn't know basic things? Who doesn't even know what she wants because she was never given anything? H.M. I know she likes apples. Yeah, I was thinking of getting her a cake in the shape of an apple. She's showing interest in things like dolls and stuffed animals. Shouta already got her some of those, as Ashi picked out the cutest dresses for her. But I feel like there's something missing. Aburo chewed on his thumbnail anxiously. Something that'll make her smile the way you smiled on your birthday. But I just can't figure it out. You know what she needs. She needs fun. I mean the type of fun that will make you look back fondly in years to come. Yuri was isolated her whole life up until this point. Yes, we had some fun outings, but nothing that made her go wow. Hitoshi made fists, and then expanded his fingers out like it was an explosion as he finished speaking. That's what she needs, not a party. Aburo tapped his fingers on the doorframe before nodding. 
You might be onto something kiddo. Let me go and talk to the others. Well, days would pass. Itoshi was out of the loop as to what the adults were planning. That didn't stop him from bugging one of them to help him get a present for Eri. They happily obliged and he wrapped it for her birthday. On December the 20th Hitoshi went to bed with Moss in his arms. In the early wee hours of December 21st, he was awakened by someone shaking him. Get up, sleepyhead. He heard Abura whisper as he cracked his eyes open. What time is it? Hitoshi groaned out and reached for his phone, something else he never thought he'd ever own. Just a little past 4 a.m., get dressed, training. He rubbed at his face and felt Moss move. No, just regular clothing. Hurry up, you can sleep in the car. Leaving, Itoshi yawned heavily. He rubbed at the back of his head and blearily looked around the room. Yeah, just get dressed. Aburo told him and Hitoshi shrugged in sleepy defeat. His motor functions weren't exactly the best considering the early morning, but he adapted. He put on the striped dress that he got for his birthday as it was long sleeve. He then put on some black tights and blue jean shorts under the dress. He then bundled up in a coat, as it was still winter, and put on his black boots. Walking out, Moss stretched and yawned a big yawn. You're going to need this, Shouta instructed as he passed by Hitoshi. He handed Hitoshi Moss's fake service animal vest. Shouta then stopped and turned. You can't be serious about that outfit. It's going to be four degrees out. I got a coat. Hitoshi shrugged. It's not the worst thing I've worn in winter. And the dress is thick fabric. It was true. The worst thing he was forced to wear in winter was a wife beater and a pair of boxer shorts in the middle of a snowy Wednesday morning. So, this was fine. The dress itself was also a thicker fabric almost like it was just an elongated sweater. Shouta shrugged. I don't want to hear your cold. He stated before walking away making Hitoshi smile. Come on, Moss. Hitoshi grabbed Moss and started to put him in the vest. Moss knew what to do by this point as he stepped in and stood still while Hitoshi strapped him in. Great, let me get your leash. He retreated to his bedroom, grabbed Moss's leash off of his dresser, and also picked up Eri's present. He had a feeling he was going to need it. He latched Moss to the leash and started to walk. Moss kept in step as they walked into the kitchen where Hazashi was making breakfast sandwiches. Hazashi, like Hitoshi was also wearing a long-sleeved dress. His was more in the style of the 50s versus Hitoshi's sweater dress. He also wore tights under them. Good morning. He greeted Hitoshi was a chirp while he put the last sandwich together. Get a sandwich while they're still hot. What's Hitoshi yawned? What's going on? He asked while picking a sandwich up. He took a bite and perked. Eggs, cheese, and bacon. His favorite combination. You'll see. Hitoshi shrugged. He picked Moss up and fed him some bacon. The cat sleepily munched on the meat. Aburo came into the room with Uri on his hip. The, now six-year-old, was slightly fussy at being woken up so early. A good sign in all actuality. It meant that she was trusting them enough to show such emotions instead of keeping to herself. Aburo had gotten her dressed and her hair done up into a high ponytail. Itoshi snatched a second sandwich off of the counter and walked up to her. Good morning. He greeted Uri and was met with a grunt and a headshake while tangling her little hands and her hair already starting to mess up the ponytail. Someone's cranky. Itoshi teased before handing her a sandwich. She would wind up taking it to eat but not before giving out another grunt of response. Soon, everyone would be swept into the car. Uri in her booster seat and strapped in. Aburo sat between the two of them while Hazashi and Shouta sat in front. Blankets. Shouta tossed a couple of throw blankets over to them. The ride is a little long, so get some sleep. Didn't need to tell Hitoshi twice. He tucked Iri's present away under his seat, wrapped himself up in a cozy blanket with Moss right on his lap and he was out like a light only milliseconds later. Hitoshi was up and down the whole car ride, waking up to Hazashi and Shouta softly arguing over a map, to which Aburo had to join in from the back, then falling back asleep. Waking up to the sun piercing through his eyelid, making him lean in a different direction to go back to sleep. To him finally waking up when Uri poked his cheek and whispered Big Brother to get his attention. Which was impressive because she did it past Aburo, who was very much awake and just watching this happen. Yes, sweetie. Hitoshi groaned and stretched himself, forgetting for a second that Moss was in his lap and causing the cat to go falling down from his lap. With the look of betrayal, Moss was giving him one would have thought Hitoshi had personally harmed him. You look pretty. Itoshi smiled a sleepy chuckle. Thanks. You look pretty too. Uri giggled and happily kicked her feet. Itoshi picked Moss back up and placed his cat in his lap. You know, Aburo, I've been thinking. Itoshi pat Moss's ears. Even though he's chipped, we should maybe think about getting Moss a collar. Moss moved past Itoshi's hand and actually made a face while curling his lip and screwing an eye close. Oh, I don't think Moss likes that idea, Aburo said with a bit of a laugh. Don't need Nedzu to translate that. No, Itoshi asked the cat and Moss shook his head firmly. But this way nobody can say you're astray without checking to see if you're chipped. He told his cat. Moss, once again, shook his head firmly. He then stood, a little wobbly, in Hitoshi's lap and shook his body. The leash and the vest rattled. 
It felt like he was trying to tell Hitoshi something with this movement but Hitoshi just couldn't figure out what. It must have been evident on his face because Moss tried a different tactic. He stood on his hind legs and batted at Hitoshi's choker. The moon pendant rattled against the metal ring holding it in place. Aburo snapped his fingers. It's the noise. If you get a collar, one with a tag, it'll jingle. Is that it? Moss got down and nodded. Why should that matter? Hitoshi inquired. Moss pretended to get low and made a show to make it look like he was stalking something. Oh, Hitoshi wanted to slap himself. He can't hunt if he has something jingling around his neck. Not gonna lie, Moss, I forgot you like to hunt. Now that I think about it, he doesn't eat his kibble as much as the others. Most of the time I spy pumpkin or brat eating his leftover kibble. Aburo mumbled. Does that mean you've been eating the mice outside? Moss perked up and nodded. This made Aburo laugh as he patted Moss. And here the other cats are too scared to go near those things. You know they make collars where they print the address and name on the side, right? This way there's nothing to jingle. Hitoshi offered as he showed Moss the collar in particular. Moss still rose his nose at this option. Okay, okay, no collar. I'll respect that. Hitoshi then gazed out of the window and looked at the building passing them by and he rose an eyebrow. Something didn't feel right. Are we out of Musutafu? He asked once he realized that there were far more trees than buildings. Well spotted, Shouta said from the passenger seat, and pretty quickly too. The man pulled his seat down so he was laying down and able to face them without turning. Where are we going? Iri innocently asked as she munched on a baggie full of goldfish. It's a surprise for your birthday. Aburo whispered and Iri suddenly looked confused. My birthday. She tilted her head. I don't understand. Remember how we celebrated Hitoshi's birthday a few months back in July? Shouta asked her and she nodded. Big Brother started crying. Sure, that's what you remember. Hitoshi smiled with a headshake. Well, now it's your turn to have a birthday. Shouta explained and Iri shook her head. I don't get a birthday. She stated and went back to her goldfish. Aburo licked his lips and looked at her. What do you mean by that? Aburo inquired in a gentle tone. Well, Kai told me I was no longer allowed to have a birthday. Iri explained and popped another goldfish in her mouth. So, I don't have a birthday. The adults turned furious. It was clear in their faces, but they weren't angry at Iri, never at Iri. Just at her mistreatment. It made Hitoshi angry just the same. But he had something that the adults didn't have. Experience. He reached past Aburo and touched Iri's hand, making her stop her munching. I thought the same thing. He told her. My uncle never let me have a birthday. He said my birth didn't matter and it wasn't worth celebrating. That's why when I did have one for the first time in six years it made me cry. That's why you're having a birthday. Because your birth does matter. He told her and gently thumbed her little hand. Iri looked even more confused before she put her goldfish down. She just had a perplexed look on her face. It was like it was something she always wanted to hear but couldn't understand why she was hearing it. I don't understand. She whispered weakly. You will. Look, we're coming up to our destination now, can you see it? Aburo asked as he pointed forward. Itoshi looked at where he was pointing and he sat up in surprise. Is that Tokyo Disney? It certainly was Tokyo Disney and it was a perfect gift for Eerie. Because of the time of the year, close to Christmas, the park wasn't as populated as it would be in the summer. The whole day Iri and Hitoshi rushed around. They rode some rides, though Iri opted out of a lot of rides because she was scared, which they respected, especially when Hitoshi went to ride on some of the more thrilling rides with Aburo or Shouta. He even got to have Moss ride a ride, just one little kiddie coaster and he had to keep a tight hold on Moss the entire time. The rides were never the reason for the Disney trip. It was the pictures, the pictures with the cast and crew. Hitoshi had to shed his jacket just so he got a decent picture with Cinderella. Aren't you just lovely? Cinderella asked him while pinching his cheek. Iri even got to see her favorite Disney princess, Rapunzel. I love your hair. Rapunzel complimented her and Hitoshi was sure Iri rode that high the rest of the trip. And yes, Moss even got a picture with Mulan. Look at him. He's adorable. The Mulan actress gushed over him while rubbing her nose to his. So polite. But finally, at the end of the long day, when the sky darkened, came the real reason for this trip. Shouta put Iri on his shoulders as they stood with a small crowd looking up at the sky. What are we waiting for? Iri asked softly. You'll see, Aburo told her as he patted her back. Hitoshi stood next to his ashy with moss on his shoulder. Everyone waited with bated breath. Light streaked across the sky at a fast speed. It flew higher and higher until it exploded into a bright red color with a loud boom. An image of Mickey Mouse ears was seen for about five seconds before it went down. Iri gasped in surprise. More fireworks lit up the sky in a dazzling array of lights, pops, cracks, and booms. Itoshi looked at Iri. The lights from the fireworks bounced off her face. There was just a stunned look on her face as she watched the fireworks with unblinking eyes. For a moment, Hitoshi feared that maybe the adults had the wrong idea, that the fireworks were just too much for her to handle. Then dot 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 she started to smile. The smile started small before turning into a huge grin. 
She bounced happily on Shouta's shoulders as more and more fireworks went off. Then, it happened. She threw her arms up and squealed happily. This is amazing. She cried with happiness as the fireworks popped overhead. Aburo's breath hitched and Hitoshi could see happy tears in his eyes. He looked at Hizashi and saw that he too looked like he could start crying with happiness. Happy birthday, Ari. Aburo cried, actually cried. Happy birthday. Shouta sniffled and patted her foot. Happy birthday, baby, Hizashi whispered. A large firework went off with a deafening boom, and Ari let out another happy shriek. Hitoshi felt himself tear up just watching her be happy for once in her life. Truly and utterly happy. He turned to look at the fireworks with his own grin actually hurting his face. Three let out another happy cry when another firework popped off and he couldn't help it, he joined in. He shrieked with joy with her. It was a memory none of them would forget. Of course, it would end, but for now, it was perfect. Three's other presents would pale in comparison to this. Still, when they got back into the car at the end of the night, Hitoshi picked up the present he got her and handed it to her. Happy birthday. He handed the present to her and she took it. Slowly, she unwrapped it and her face split into a grin at the toy Hitoshi got her. It was a little stuffed animal well. Stuffed fruit. It was an apple. An apple with a smiling face. No arms, no legs, just a green apple. She held it tightly to her chest. I love it. She jumped up and down with glee. I'm glad. He patted her hair. I'm really glad you love it. It's time we let you in on a secret that nobody else knows about the entrance exam. The family was eating dinner, the entrance exam only two days away, when Shouta said that to Hitoshi. Suddenly, all eyes were on him. Hitoshi perked up a bit and put his chopsticks down. Okay, as you're probably aware, the exam is biased. It's biased towards people like Hizashi and Aburo, those with combative quirks. It's made in a way so only those with strong quirks can get in. Hitoshi nodded. Yes, I've noticed this in Vlad's class. Most, if not all, of his students have combative quirks. That and Monoma told me. Monoma is aware of this. Hizashi inquired and Hitoshi nodded. Both of his parents are heroes. His father is a rescue hero and his mother works as a counselor for those recovering from a villain attack, which requires a hero license. Both went to UA. Both have passive and weak quirks and they had to get in through the sports festival. Hitoshi explained rather softly and it made Shouta nod. I know that feeling. I was the same way. Shouta then cleared his throat and went right back on the subject. Regardless, there's a loophole to this biased system. Hitoshi perked up visibly and twisted his fingers together nervously. After a second of silence, Shouta continued. There are two point systems. There are the normal villain points that you get for fighting the robots you'll be facing. Then, there are secret points you can earn. Rescue points. Rescue points. Hitoshi whispered like he was learning some sort of forbidden knowledge. Yes, you see, Hitoshi. It goes to show that as teenagers with superpowers go there are going to be some that are a danger to themselves or each other. You can get rescue points by helping those that need them. An example would be someone causing part of a building to fall and you see someone under the falling rubble and don't notice it, so you push them out of the way. For that heroic action, you get rescue points. Shouta continued to explain to Hitoshi. Understand. Hitoshi smiled a little. So, ignore the machines, help those who need it. Is that what you're telling me? That's what we want from you. Your quirk isn't good enough to face off against machines and that's fine. Help those you see need it and you'll rack up rescue points. Get enough rescue points and you have a spot in the hero course. Determination flooded inside of Hitoshi as he straightened his back up and smiled a little bigger. I won't let you down. That spot in the hero course is as good as mine. Shouta and the others all smiled the same. I know you won't. We all believe in you, Hitoshi. Hitoshi looked at the UA gates. The gates of the school he's been sitting inside of nearly every day all year. He licked his lips nervously as he looked at all of the others coming for the entrance exam. He wished for nothing more than to have Moss by his side. But Moss wasn't allowed. The exam was about him. Not about him and Moss. Nervous, Hitoshi jumped at the voice behind him. He turned to see a blonde boy. This boy had electric yellow eyes with equally yellow hair. He also had a lightning bolt of black across his bangs. He had a soft face and a sweet voice. Yeah, Hitoshi whispered and looked back at the gates. Ew, yeah. The boy laughed and swallowed hard as he stood next to Hitoshi. They both stared up at the UA gates and the boy took a step forward. But I'm going to be a hero. So, I can't afford to be nervous. Right. Hitoshi nodded. You're right. He stepped past the gates with the boy. The boy looked at him and then seemed to make a bit of a confused face. Are you? The boy trailed off and rubbed at the back of his head. He gave Hitoshi an awkward little laugh before trying again. Are you a boy or girl? Hitoshi hummed almost a little pleased with this outcome. He was wearing the same outfit he wore when they went to Disney two months prior. The stripped sweater dress, black tights, and shorts. He, of course, had gym clothes and a duffel bag hanging off of his arm for when he would get to the physical exam. He walked a little past the boy with a small swagger in his step. I'll let you decide, he stated and kept on walking. 
Hitoshi got to the first testing area, and, in all honesty, it was a breeze. Yeah, there were some questions he didn't know the answer to, but he knew enough to know he passed the written exam with, maybe not flying colors, but decent colors. But everyone knew that the written exam was just to get into the school. If passed then he would be Gen Ed at least. But Hitoshi wasn't here for Gen Ed. He was here for the hero course. So, he got changed into his gym clothes and sat in the auditorium. There, Hizashi would address the crowd and, it was weird, at least for Hitoshi. He was so used to Hizashi. Not present Mike. Present Mike was loud, almost unnecessarily so, and was trying to hype up the student body. He was also failing at doing as such. Regardless of the weirdness, Hitoshi listened to everything his foster parent had to say when talking about the villain robots. Hitoshi narrowed his eyes. Why isn't he talking about the fourth bot? He thought and looked at the silhouette of the fourth unidentified robot. And it was like someone else read those thoughts. Wait a moment. A voice screamed out making Hitoshi jump because the guy was right next to him. A big burly kid with navy blue hair and square rectangle glasses. Hitoshi actually had to move to the side as the boy nearly knocked him down in his fervent moment to demand attention. Hitoshi wasn't sure if Hizashi could see him, but he gave his foster parent an awkward wave in response. You haven't explained what the fourth robot does. The boy yelled so loud that his voice echoed around the whole auditorium. Who needs a microphone when this guy has the lungs of a god? Hitoshi thought almost impressed with the tenacity of this kid. Oh, then all thing. Present Mike asked almost too innocently. That's just a zero-pointer. You guys don't have to worry about them. He then proceeded to show the zero-pointer so everyone could see it. As its name suggests, they are worth zero points. That satisfied the boy and he quickly sat back down. It wasn't long after that was Hitoshi and the others quickly ushered away to their designated training ground. Hitoshi was swiftly grouped with a bunch of other kids and immediately yelling caught his attention. Don't even bother. I'm going to destroy all of the robots, so you better just stay behind and stay out of my way. Oh great. Hitoshi mumbled and turned away from the yeller. It was another blonde. This one with spiky hair and candy red eyes. He looked and sensed that anybody even dared to sign up for UA as he did. Hitoshi was getting Uncle Ju vibes from this kid and opted to stay out of this kid's line of sight. Well, well. Feeling a hand on his right shoulder, Hitoshi turned towards it, but was duped and had to look towards his left to see Monoma. It's been a while. I literally saw you yesterday. Monoma, Hitoshi told him rather matter-of-factly and it made Monoma smile. No Masi, Monoma innocently asked. No, Mas is currently being watched over. It's too dangerous for him. Hitoshi gave Monoma his own smile. So, have you scoped out the competition? I have. From what I gathered only a few can be considered actual candidates. That includes the blonde you heard screaming a few moments ago. Real cheery one he is, about as cuddly as a cactus. Then there's the other blonde, that one. Monoma jutted his thumb out and Hitoshi saw the blonde he was talking to at the UA gates. They both have uber-powerful quirks, little do they know I'm going to copy both. Monoma smugly said while crossing his arms. What about you? There isn't much you can do with that brainwashing quirk. I know. Don't worry about me. I got a plan. Monoma shrugged. Very well. Just stay safe. Okay. I still expect to dance with you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You worry too much, you mother hen. Monoma smiled and stalked off to scope out his two victims for this test. Hitoshi watched him go and rubbed at his arms, suddenly feeling cold. I can do this, he whispered to himself. You quirkless. Oh shit. Hitoshi gasped when he turned to see the blonde from earlier, the one screaming at anyone and everyone. He bumped shoulders with Monoma when they passed one another and Monoma put a hand on the guy's shoulder. To the outsider, it would look like Monoma was silently telling the boy that all was good, but Hitoshi knew better. Monoma got his first quirk without even training. What? Hitoshi asked the boy in confusion once they were standing face to face. He just wasn't expecting such a question. The blonde narrowed his red eyes in slight irritation. Are you quirkless? He repeated with a bit more of a subdued bite. Like he was angry, but not at Hitoshi. You look it. You look nervous and I don't see you training with a quirk like the others are. That dot 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 is none of your business. Hitoshi crossed his arms over his chest and sneered at the stranger. They have a point. Someone suddenly came to Hitoshi's aid. Another boy, roughly the same age as Hitoshi, his head was that of a bird's head. At first glance, one would think he was a raven or even a crow, but no, his beak was well and his eyes were red. That told Hitoshi that this boy was probably an Asian coal. Hitoshi was honestly surprised to see that the boy had hands and not wings. So, this boy's head was only in the shape of a bird. It is none of your business whether someone has a quirk or not. We're all here to join for UA. Shut it, bird brain. I only asked because this loser is going to get himself killed if he is. The blonde sneered and thrust his thumb at Hitoshi. Just focus on yourself. Hitoshi bit back a little harshly. I don't need your pity. The blonde narrowed his eyes, sucked his teeth, and then turned without another word. Once he was gone, Hitoshi turned towards the other teenager. Thank you. You didn't have to stick up for me. The boy shrugged. 
just doing what anybody else would do. He commented and then bowed. Takoyami Fumikage, Itoshi. Itoshi bowed back. I look forward to seeing you in UA. Itoshi was surprised to see that Takoyami could blush a little. Getting a little ahead of ourselves are we? Maybe a little. Whoa. Itoshi gasped in alarm when a bird-like shadow emerged from Takoyami's hand and was suddenly in his face. Dark Shadow my apologies. Dark Shadow doesn't understand personal space all that well. Takoyami explained and called for Dark Shadow to back up. Dark Shadow did and wrapped themselves around Takoyami's shoulder in response. Heh. <sighs> Ascension quirk, how rare. And cute. Dark Shadow blushed and gave Hitoshi an OU. Wave. Well, anything they wanted to say to one another was put on hold. The buzzer rang. Good luck. Hitoshi gave Takoyami an awkward thumbs up before rushing past him. I look forward to seeing you again. Then he was in with the rushing crowd. But Hitoshi had a different goal than all of them and he was determined. He was going to make his foster parents proud and he was going to be in the UA hero course by any means necessary. Izuku frowned as he watched Hitoshi go. He wasn't allowed to be with Hitoshi during the entrance exam. So, here he was, sitting with the other teachers in the lounge as they all watched the cameras. There were lots of cameras to observe from and yes, at first he was watching Hitoshi. He was eagerly watching Hitoshi's every movement. But then Bakugo made himself known. Bakugo was the same as he ever was. He destroyed every robot, ranking in the points by the mounds and leaving everyone in the dust. However, this came at a price, a price that was helping Hitoshi. Bakugo was sloppy in his attacks and caused some people distress, be it exploding a robot so hard that shrapnel went flying at another student, or causing pieces of buildings to fall and harm others. Hitoshi knew exactly what to do. He followed Bakugo at every step and saved all of those in his path. Both Hitoshi and Bakugo were raking in the points. Aburo and Hizashi were also watching the screen with glee as Hitoshi, in just minutes, reached past the limit needed to join the hero course. You got this, Izuku whispered and decided to move on. He went to the next training ground. It was rather boring, so he moved on to the next one. Oh, hello. He watched with glee as a girl with a gravity quirk lifted robots high in the air and sent them crashing down. I must say, this year's applicants are quite remarkable. Wouldn't you agree, Moss? Nedzu asked him and Izuku looked at the principal. Why are you asking the cat? Vlad asked with a raised eyebrow. He doesn't even work for you. Not yet. That does remind me. Shouta, have you decided what service animal you wanted Moss to be, yet? No. Shouta grunted from his sleeping bag. You know emotional support won't fly. Next thing we know we'll have students trying to bring all their pets to school. Under the guise of emotional support. Nedzu reached up and patted Izuku between the ears. Nedzu dot 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 it's the three minute mark. Hazashi turned in his chair to look at his boss. Nedzu grinned. Ah, my favorite part of the exam. Go ahead and bring out the zero pointers, Hazashi. Hazashi looked at Aburo, who turned to look at Shouta. All of them were frowning. There was a sigh from Hazashi and he reached over to press a big red button. Things are about to get interesting, indeed. Izuku's ears went far back when the zero pointer made itself known. It was a giant robot the size of a large office building. Izuku let his eyes linger on the ground below. He felt his fur bristle as this robot grabbed onto a building and crushed it in one of its mighty hands. His horror only grew when the gravity girl he was watching earlier got stuck under the rubble. Everyone else was running away from her. She was calling to them but nobody was listening. His feet moved before he could stop himself. Spicy, he heard shout a call after him, but it was too late, he was already gone. Izuku could only pray he'd be in time. There was a thundering boom, the ground was shaking, and Hitoshi looked up in absolute fear at the zero-pointer machine that was approaching. Everyone stopped their battle smashing to just stare at the massive thing as it made its way towards them. I'm out of here. The blonde with a black streak grumbled and started to walk back. I have no interest in something that's worth zero points, even if that thing is massive. There are grumbles as others started stalking off. Everyone, except the explosive blonde, the one with the literal explosion quirk. Hey, Hitoshi put his hands in his pockets. You common? He asked the blonde. The blonde just stared at the zero pointer and Hitoshi heard him mumble something soft, something that made him narrow his eyes. For you, I'm doing this for you. The blonde suddenly flew in the air, high, high above the buildings with the aid of his quirk. He rushed to the robot and Hitoshi only watched, along with everyone else, as there was a huge fireball explosion, right as the robot destroyed part of a building with one of its giant claws. The explosion didn't even phase the robot. Yeah, the thing stumbled back, but that was about it. Hitoshi heard the blonde rage in the air and try again. That was when the robot swatted him out of the air like it was swatting a fly. The boy went flying before he hit the nearby ground. Hey, Hitoshi rushed towards the blonde quickly. His ballet lessons became useful as he dodged falling debris as the robot slashed at another building. Hitoshi got to the blonde and bent down. Hey, are you okay? He asked and shook the blonde. Get the fuck off of me and get out of here. There was nothing but anger and determination behind those red eyes as the boy knocked Hitoshi's hands away from him. 
It's mine. It's not worth any points. Hitoshi grabbed onto the boy and yanked him back as he started to stand. You're just putting yourself in danger for no reason. Why? It's not for no reason. The blonde was back on his feet and he stared at the robot coming towards them. I have to do this. I have to be the best. I there was something behind those eyes. Hurt. Hitoshi didn't know. I have to make up for what I did. Stop. Hitoshi demanded and the boy froze. His whole body went limp like he lost all control. Hitoshi narrowed his eyes and pointed. Go back to the exit. Hitoshi gasped at the loud boom, and he looked up in surprise. He saw rubble coming down for him and his heart rate spiked. He went to jump away, knowing that he didn't even have time to do that. Dark shadow. Something black streaked past him and by the time Hitoshi landed on his stomach the rubble was going in the opposite direction. Dark shadow had successfully pushed it away from both Hitoshi and the other boy alike. Come on. Takoyami grabbed Hitoshi's arm and the two of them rushed for the exit, with the explosive blonde slowly walking that way as well. Run, Hitoshi demanded and the boy did as instructed. The rest of them ran to meet up with the others at the exit. Hitoshi put his hands on his knees. He's run a lot. And even though that was only a short distance it, it was the most breathtaking run he's ever had to do. Probably because he nearly died. He put a hand on Takoyami's shoulder. Thank you, he whispered. Takoyami gave a small smile. You would have done the same. Don't think I didn't see you getting everyone else out of harm's way. Yeah, dude, did you even get a point? The other blonde asked in alarm. Doesn't matter. Itoshi. Monoma came up. His eyes narrowed in suspicion. Do you know something I don't? He whispered. Itoshi smirked and pulled Monoma in. He whispered what he knew to his friend. Oh, HM. Monoma made a zipper motion across his mouth. I envy you sometimes, you know that. And that's it. The physical exam is over. While Hitoshi was still in his exam, Izuku ran. He ran and he ran until he thought his paws were going to fall off. He didn't stop even to breathe. He knew what he was doing was a long shot, but he wasn't going to let that girl die. Not for some exam. He knew he must have made to the training ground in record time. He slipped under the door and ran past the people all standing around just talking. Hey, whose cat is that? Some demanded and that must have got the other's attention as Izuku darted pasted them and made a beeline for the poor girl. He has a vest on. He must belong to someone. He heard someone else yell. Help me. The girl screamed again and the closer Izuku got to her the more the ground began to shake as the zero pointer was almost right on top of her. Somebody. Huh. The girl was immediately confused when she met her savior. The cat. I was looking over the blueprints for these things while Hizashi was talking about them during the orientation. Izuku jumped up and over the girl as he rushed straight for the robot. There's a control box on its chest on the inside. I'll have to go up through the wheels. He rushed up to the wheels that were turning on a conveyor belt and he slipped inside the robot. Izuku used his claws to work his way into the turning wheel. He gritted his teeth in pain when his tail got crushed between two turning claws, but he yanked his tail out and kept going. Oil stained his paws and his fur his foot slipped and got caught in another set of clogs. Again, he just pushed through the pain and limped his way to the control box and he looked for the off switch. The girl's screams got more and more frantic. No time. Izuku did the dumbest thing he could think of. He grabbed the bunch of wires in his mouth and pulled. He felt pain as electricity coursed through his entire tiny body. He couldn't let go. His body wouldn't allow it as it ceased. He could briefly smell cooking meat and realize that was his own body cooking. Then, everything went black. A travesty. They will pay for this misdeed. Yes, yes they will. They will all pay. This one will be my strongest yet. The robot stopped right before crushing the girl. Thank goodness. All the teachers just watched in amazement. Then in horror when Spicy's body fell limp out from under the robot. Shit. Vlad whispered and turned to Shouta and his family. Shouta had the remote to turn the zero pointer off in his hand, but he was just a little too late. The cat was dead, obviously. What are you going to tell Hitoshi? He loved that thing. Vlad asked after a few seconds of just stunned silence. That his cat got rescue points. Shouta suddenly smirked, and is in the hero course. Shouta, that thing is dead and clearly roasting. Look, it's still smoking. Please stop referring to mosses in it. Aburo requested. That cat has a healing factor like none we've ever seen. He'll be back on his feet before the day ends. Tashinori's mouth was gaping. Seriously, I witnessed this cat get flattened by a semi. Within 12 hours he was up and walking about. Aburo told them. He'll be fine. Shocked faces from everyone who didn't know about Masa's insane healing. Oh, shit Hizashi quickly turned and grabbed the microphone. And that's it. He called to the teenagers while making a motion with his hand for Shouta to turn off the zero pointers. Shouta did so. The physical exam is over. Please remain in the training ground to be seen by our very own recovery girl and medical bots. He called and then hung up the microphone. Nimari cleared her throat. Guys, someone should really go and get spicy. Because, uh, the girl free and cradling his dead body. You were such a brave kitty. Achako whispered as she patted the strange green cat's dirty fur. 
tears fell down her face. Animals getting hurt was always one of her weak points and it was no exception to the cat that died to save her. Her sadness turned to rage as she looked at all of the onlookers just watching her. Shame on all of you. She cursed at them. Not one of you bothered to help me and now look. A cat is dead. A poor animal had to save me. You call yourself would-be heroes. Was it the nicest thing to say? No, but no cat should have to suffer the way this one had. Now he she paused and looked. Yes, he is chasing mice in kitty heaven now. His poor owner is going to be devastated. Achako knew it was going to be hard, but she was going to go to. She looked at the side of the vest Aburo Shurikumo and tell him about Cupcake's death. Whoever Aburo was might demand compensation for such a death. This cat had green fur and was clearly well-trained. Quirked, probably, if he knew that Achako was in danger and in need of rescuing. Oh please, don't blame us because you became a damsel. Some boy huffed in irritation at her. That thing was worth zero points. Did you really expect us to risk our necks for that? Fuck you. Achako stood and held the dead cat close. There's no need for fighting. A boy with blue hair and rectangular glasses got in the middle. Young lady, please, let me apologize. I didn't see nor hear you. If I would have, I would have come to your aid. Achako had angry tears running down her face. Save it. She snapped. You've all proven who you are. I hope none of you get in. All right. All right. An elderly voice cut through the air and recovery girl hobbled in with her can. That's enough out of you youngins. No more fighting, what's done is done. Now, who's hurt? I have some gummies for any minor scrapes you may have. Excuse me. Another man pushed through. He was an adult. His right eye was damaged and white in color, and his hair a light wavy blue that hung above his head like it was weightless. Uh, there he is. He spotted the cat in Nachako's arms and she teared up heavily again. Are you Aburo? She wheezed out. That I am. He leaned down so they were eye to eye. You your cat, Cupcake Cupcake she wiped her tears. I'm so sorry. She had to use her arms to wipe her tears while holding Cupcake with the other arm. Cupcake. Oh right, Cupcake. He whispered and then he gently brought his arms out. Give him to me. His voice was soft and non-accusatory. She did so and he wrapped the cat up in a jacket. Are you okay? He asked her. She nodded while still sobbing. She felt like a toddler getting in trouble with the teacher, unable to speak, only able to cry and shake her head or not. Are you sure? You were pinned by the debris. Do you need to get your ankle checked? She sucked in a deep breath. No, I'm fine. She swallowed hard and gave her tears another wipe. I just, I just wish your cat. Hey, hey. Aburo reached up and wiped away one of her tears. He did what he thought was best. Okay, so, don't cry over him. He wouldn't want that. Achako gave in one final breath before nodding firmly. Okay, okay. She reassured herself. I'm sorry, don't apologize. Aburo stood up and smiled down at her. Just keep on going. That's why he did this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Cupcake. She whispered to the cat that was now hidden away in a jacket. May you hunt all the mice you can in kitty heaven. Hitoshi knew something happened when he was taking his exam by the fact that Shouta and Hazashi refused to let him see Moss. Even in the car, he couldn't see his beloved cat. They were halfway home when Hitoshi finally just came out and asked. He's dead, isn't he? Silence. Mostly stunned silence from the adults. So, he'd fill it with a sigh. Hitoshi finally admitted to them. Of course, you know that I know that he has the healing factor. But I've seen Dai in front of me before. The first time I'd met him, actually, I never mentioned it because I was afraid you'd either wouldn't believe me, or you'd freak out. But, my uncle stabbed him right in front of me. Stabbed him right to the kitchen counter. I know he died. I watched as he breathed his last breath. Then, hours later he's at my door with the literal key to let me out. When I first met him, Aburo cautiously spoke next and he lightly opened the jacket sitting in his lap before shutting it. He got struck by a semi-truck. I know he was dead, but he was healing right in front of me. I'm presuming this was the time he was gone for nearly two days. Hitoshi asked. It took him 12 hours to heal from his injuries. Shouta told Hitoshi from the driver's seat. Hitoshi swallowed hard. And now, how does he look now? Aburo looked like he was trying to stay optimistic. A dot 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 he's currently. Uncooking. Uncooking. Hitoshi rose an eyebrow. Yes, uncooking. It's going to take a while. Probably be another dot 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 few hours or so before he wakes up. We're going to keep him in our bedroom so Uri doesn't accidentally see. what he do? Itoshi whispered. He saved a girl from getting crushed by a zero pointer. As Ashi finally spoke up from his spot right next to Hitoshi. Let's just leave it at that. Itoshi crossed his arms. I'm going to flick his nose extra hard when he wakes up, stubborn cat. Flick him for all of us. Shouta shook his head with a smile. But also, he got hero points. Shouta shrugged. So, he's eligible for the hero course. Hitoshi smiled. I wouldn't have it any other way. But also, I've been thinking about him being a service animal. Is it possible we could register him to be an allergen service animal? After all, he did warn me about Tashinori's rice. Shouta perked. That's perfect. And that'll limit other students trying to lie about their own pets because you actually have an allergy. 
When he wakes I'll run him through the training and get the paperwork and proper vest so he's no longer cupcake. So, does this mean I got in the hero course? Itoshi asked as he leaned against the back of Shouta's seat. Nice try kid. Shouta tapped Hitoshi's nose with his knuckle. This made Hitoshi wiggle his nose in alarm. You'll just have to wait like everyone else for the results in a week. When home and the babysitter furry was relieved for the day. The day would continue on, just minus Moss. It wouldn't be until the dead of night that Hitoshi would wake to a strange heaviness on his chest. He opened his eyes and was literally nose to nose with Moss. Moss sat on his chest and purred. Hitoshi would reach up and scratch behind Moss's ear for a few seconds making the cat purr with delight. And then he would attack. He flicked against Moss's nose, hard. Moss yelped and rubbed at his nose. Stop dying, you jerk. One day, you might not wake up. Moss was clearly pouting at this and his ears went back. Hitoshi grabbed Moss and picked him up. He then pushed Moss down beside him on the bed. I don't want to lose you. He whispered while nuzzling against Moss's soft chest. Every time you die. I don't want to worry if that'll be the last time you'll open your eyes. So, please be more careful. What are you guys doing? Iri asked as she approached the three adults all crowding around Hitoshi's door. S.H. Aburo put his finger to his lips. He then leaned down and picked Iri up. Your big brother got his UA letter today. He told her in a very soft voice. We're waiting to see his reaction. Oh, she whispered in understanding. Did he get in? She asked and the adults all shared a knowing smile. Well, they didn't even need to get a verbal response as only a second later she heard loud cheering. Yes, he got the highest score in rescue points ever seen in UA history. Shouta smiled he then pushed his ashi and Aburo back, which was for the best as Hitoshi burst through his door. He looked around frantically before spotting them. I got in. He continued to yell, yes, yell. The boy who couldn't bring himself to say more than two words to them was yelling in happiness. That's amazing. High five. Aburo raised his hand up. Well, Hitoshi apparently said fuck then and hugged Aburo tightly. Aburo gasped, smiled, and patted Hitoshi's head. Hitoshi then rushed and hugged Hizashi. Oh, Hizashi gasped as he actually lifted just an inch off of the floor. Why Shouta, not being a hugger, tried to stop him, but it was too late. He was caught in a tight hug, one that swept all the air out of his lungs. I couldn't have done it without you, dads. He then rushed away. Moss, Moss. Hitoshi nearly slid on the hardwood floor, while still in his socks, as he ran outside. Unaware of what he just said, I got into the UA hero course. He screamed outside clearly now unsatisfied with just telling his cat. He wanted the world to know. I'm going to be a hero. Honestly, no male inside the house was listening. Huh. Here he tilted her head. He just called you guys. Dad. Aburo whispered. Dad. As Ashi put both hands to his blushing cheeks, Shouta put his hand to his head. Dad. Oh my god dot 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 we're dads. He gasped as if it just struck him. We're dads. Both Aburo and Hazashi yelled at the same time in the same excitement that exhilaration that Hitoshi was currently feeling as he did a victory dance all around the backyard with Moss in his arms while Pumpkin chased around Hitoshi's feet clearly wanting his mother back. God, was Hitoshi nervous. Today was the day. His first official day. He looked at Moss who was sitting on his shoulder a brand new service animal vest on him. An actual vest. Not Cupcake's fake vest. On the side in big bold letters declared allergen detection pet. Do not disturb. With Moss's name and Hitoshi as his owner. Are you nervous? Hitoshi whispered to Moss. Moss nodded and it made Hitoshi feel a little better that he wasn't the only nervous one. Hitoshi pulled on his skirt. Maybe I should wear pants. His dads were more than happy to indulge him by giving him both school pants and school skirts. Hitoshi had already shaved his legs earlier that morning. Nobody should have to see his hairy legs because he wanted to wear a skirt. He even put that makeup gift card to use and went makeup shopping with Nimuri. Who insisted she be called Auntie Nem. The whole time in the mall, he wasn't wearing much in terms of makeup. He found it sits heavy on his face and even some like to give him acne. So, he just stick with some eyeliner and a little mascara. Besides, despite today being the first day Hitoshi had a feeling that it wasn't going to be like a normal school. So, he went light on the makeup for no other reason than he didn't want it running down his face while he sweated. Moss shook his head. No, you don't think I should. Another head shake from Moss and Hitoshi looked at himself in the mirror. He put his hand to his face and smiled at his own reflection. He felt pretty today and he wanted people to see that in how he dressed. The issue is that this was his first day back in a school setting. He can't hide behind a screen as he had been in the past. His actual peers will see him. Not quite strangers but people he will see every day for the next three years. He frowned and then straightened his shoulders in determination. You're right. If I wear pants now when I don't want to wear pants then I'm letting them win. Despite them not even knowing they've won. He whispered and then put his hands on his hips. He heard Moss purr and it made him scratch under his cat's chin lovingly. Moss purred a little louder, leaned into Hitoshi's touch, and looked blissful for the few seconds it took. Hitoshi was glad Moss was with him. He was glad he wasn't going to be going through this first day completely alone. 
Even if the whole class rejects him, that's fine. He is Moss. He doesn't need anyone else. If they wanted to be friends then that was a bonus. He walked out of his room and immediately Eri barreled into him. Up. She demanded and raised her arms up like she were a toddler. Hitoshi could only comply. He bent down and picked her up from under her arms and hoisted her on his hip. Hitoshi smiled and lightly pinched her cheek. Are you going to behave while I'm in class? Eri nodded eagerly. Yep. Though, it's going to be lonely in the lounge without you. But that's fine. I have Papa to watch me unless something comes up. Erg, Aburo, who had been in the hallway waiting for them, grabbed onto his chest dramatically. He then keeled over so he was on his knees. I will never get over being Papa he wheezed. Yep, three dads and so calling each one of them dad would get confusing. So, there was Papa for Aburo, dad for his ashy and dot 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 while well they couldn't agree on Shouta. Iri likes Pop for Shouta however Hitoshi on the other hand prefers his name better. Sire, it drives Shouta insane but he hasn't said stop just yet. If anything, Hitoshi was sure Shouta found it amusing as every time he called him that he would see the man's mouth tick upwards in a smile for just a brief moment. Aburo would eventually get over his cuteness shock and smile at both of them. Hitoshi, are you ready for heroics? More than ever, it's a shame you aren't teaching battle training. Yeah, I know, I mean I'll still be nearby. I'm just a sub now. Just dot 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 go easy on Toshinori, okay. He's new. Hitoshi smiled. Hey, as long as he and Vlad treat me like I'm human. Unlike my middle school teachers, then I'll be fine. A brief look of confusion flashed over Aburo's face. Vlad. Well, yeah Hitoshi paused to shift Uri over to his other hip. Shouta told me I'm going to Vlad's class because he's fostering me and it'll be seen as nepotism if I'm in his class. I mean, I'm still in 1A, not that it matters to me. I could be in 1B with dad and still be just as happy as I am now. Of course when not around Shouta, Hitoshi simply found it easier to refer to the man as dad the same as his ashy. Aburo looked like he was trying not to laugh. He shook his head firmly to wipe any looks off of his face. Right of course. Aburo looked down at Itoshi's footwear. Ah, going for the chunky boots on your first day. Daring. Yeah, we can wear any shoes we want, right? As long as it's closed-toed and school-appropriate. Aburo nodded. Most people prefer the shoes the school sells for the prestige look. But any shoe is allowed. Aburo reminded him. So, don't let some power-hungry teacher tell you otherwise. Aburo reached over and patted Itoshi's head. Aburo looked at his watch. We should go. We can't have you late on your first day. Hitoshi approached the Wana classroom and just stood outside of it. He looked at Moss, who was off of his shoulder and now being led around by the leash. Well, that wouldn't last too long as Hitoshi's nerves got the better of him and he would soon lean down to pick Moss up. Moss mewed a little and Hitoshi held him close. My first step into a hero course. I just can't believe it dot 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 to be fair I didn't think I live long enough to even dream of going to UA. Now look at me. Hitoshi's mouth twitched nervously. Some students passing by were giving him looks, be it because of his clothes, make, or his cat he didn't know. What Itoshi did know was that he wanted inside of that classroom and now. He grabbed the handle and opened the door. Immediately he was met with yelling. That was directed at him. Thank goodness. Have you no shame? You are disrespecting the UA name and facility by propping your feet up like that. Oh, it's the guy with the lungs of a god. Hitoshi recognized the blue-haired kid immediately. He also saw the blonde with red eyes from his same test. Moss wriggled in Hitoshi's arms and suddenly his cat was on his shoulders. Tense and alert the moment both boys snapped their gaze toward him. The boy with blue hair looked almost aghast at Hitoshi. WWH the boy stuttered in alarm as he looked at every infraction that Hitoshi dare break while inside UAS sacred classrooms. You can't be wearing a girl's uniform, you're not wearing proper school shoes, and you certainly cannot have your cat with you. The boy's hand was suddenly inches from Hitoshi's face. Honestly, all Hitoshi saw was a flying hand in his direction and he reacted accordingly. He grabbed the boy's hand and twisted it down while keeping his other hand on the boy's elbow. The boy was just as stunned as he went down on one knee due to Hitoshi's self-defense. The thing was, if this boy had done this when Hitoshi had just been freed from his uncle, Hitoshi would have cowered, maybe even cried, begging not to be hit. But this was now and Hitoshi knew how to defend himself from such things dot 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 now. If only he could get rid of his fear of wooden spoons. Hitoshi released the boy's hand. Do yourself a favor, don't wave your hand like that in people's faces. Not everybody will take kindly to such a thing. They might think you're trying to hit them. Now, for your concerns. Hitoshi air quoted the word concerns. There are no rules stating boys can't wear the girl's uniform. You can wear any shoe as long as it's closed-toed and school-appropriate. And finally, Moss, here, is a service animal sanctioned by Nedzu himself. Hitoshi shut the boy down and reached up to pet Moss. Hitoshi hoped his racing heart and internal panic weren't evident on his face. He tried to keep his face as neutral as possible as he stared down at the other boy. Even Moss was looking down at this boy. H.M. The blonde suddenly smirked making Hitoshi and Moss look toward him. Moss's ears went far back and his nose rose in distaste. 
He has a point, glasses. Don't wave your hand around like that. Not everyone comes from a good home, you know. So, you the blonde turned from Ada to Atoshi. I see you passed the exam. Somehow, you know, it's funny. I seem to have a blank space in my memory. The boy then stood. And I think you're the reason behind it. Moss hissed. It was loud and angry. The same type of anger that he gave Toshinori the first time the man crossed his path. Moss growled lowly and snarled with a wide open mouth, making sure to show off all of his pointed and sharp teeth. The blonde stopped. He took one look at Moss and almost seemed to shudder. That cat, I've seen it before. If I remember correctly, that thing belonged to Loud Cloud. Well, you don't remember correctly, because he's mine. Sorry to disappoint you. It's the eyes. The blonde narrowed his eyes at Moss and Hitoshi reacted by reaching up to pet the cat under the chin. What about it? They're dot 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 too human. They look too familiar. That's why that thing freaks me out. Well, stay out of my way and he won't bug you. Isn't that right, Moss? Moss nodded a firm nod and both the blue-haired and blonde kid took started steps back. Hitoshi smiled. Good kitty. He scratched Moss under the chin. Hitoshi never got to take his seat as a familiar voice greeted him. Hitoshi. Yeyarazu. Hitoshi turned to Momo in surprise. Honestly, he shouldn't be too surprised. He knew she was training to be a hero, like him and Monoma, but he didn't expect them to be in the same class. He approached her with eagerness. It's so good to see you here. She smiled sweetly at him. Same to you. I look forward to seeing you use your ballet to your advantage. And, hello Mossy. Can he be pet? He nodded to her question and she reached up and gently scritched behind Moss's right ear. Just as handsome as ever. She looked around briefly. And upon not seeing an adult, she quickly made something with the palm of her hand. It was a tin of wet cat food. For lunch. I looked at it in the store. It's the most healthy brand for cats. She whispered and Hitoshi whispered back a soft thanks and closed his hand around the wet cat food. Hey, it's you. Hitoshi turned to see the second blonde from the exam. He waved at Hitoshi and approached. I, I still can't tell your gender, but whatever is that a real cat? Aren't you cute? The boy waved at Moss and then reached to pet him. Hitoshi grabbed the blonde's wrist before he could touch Moss. You ask before you pet. He sternly told the boy. He's a service animal and, for all you know, he could be on duty. The boy had a brief moment of shock before he nodded understandably. As sorry, I do things without thinking sometimes. Hitoshi let go of the boy's wrist and crossed his arms over his chest. I apologize if it came off as harsh. He swiftly apologized once he mulled his actions over. He's off duty and you can pet him. But understand it's not always up to me in the end, Hitoshi warned the boy. Moss is his own cat and may not wish to be pet. Moss, what a cute name. Dinky Kaminari. The boy bowed respectfully. Itoshi. Itoshi couldn't return the bow with his cat on his shoulders. No last name, Kaminari asked and he reached up to pat Moss. Moss thought about it before allowing it. None that you need to concern yourself with, Hitoshi stated firmly. Cat. Suddenly, Hitoshi found himself popular as more people came in and wanted to see Moss. Mostly girls, which was new to him. At least most of them were nice enough to ask instead of just trying to pet him. Moss did allow this as an invisible girl and a girl that was completely pink wanted to pet him at the same time. Wow, so like what's he for anyways? I heard of service dogs but never a service cat. The invisible girl asked and Hitoshi scratched at his face. Allergen detection. I have a severe shellfish allergy that could kill me. So, he's off duty until lunch. Hitoshi explained to the girls and they both let out soft O's. You know, that makes so much sense. Cats love seafood, so it stands this cute kitty can smell that kind of thing. The pink girl stated and patted Moss again. What's his name? Moss. He also goes by Mossy dot 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 and Spicy. Spicy. It's a long story. By the way, you are rocking that skirt. The pink girl happily smiled at Hitoshi and it made him blush. Oh, thank you. There was a familiar voice from the doorway. It's you again. Takoyami. I told you I'd see you in dark shadow again. Hitoshi grinned and he rushed up to the boy and grabbed his hands excitedly. Did I not? Takoyami seemed to blush before regaining himself. You did. Are you, by chance, able to see into the future? Nope. Cute. Moss moved back on Hitoshi's shoulder when Dark Shadow made themselves known. The quirk got right up into Moss's face, making the cat move his head and back in alarm. He didn't physically move from Hitoshi's shoulder, just froze. Hold. Oh no, please don't Hitoshi couldn't stop the quirk from grabbing Moss. Dark Shadow. Return that cat to its owner. Takoyami scolded his quirk, but Dark Shadow wasn't listening as they just held Moss in a hug. Dark Shadow looked back at their host and pouted. Now, Dark Shadow. He demanded in a stern and demanding tone. Dark Shadow looked down at Moss and then finally relented and went to return Moss to his owner. Hitoshi had Moss in his arms. There was a scream from the doorway and everyone that was already in the room all turned their heads in alarm. There, a girl with light brown hair and equally brown eyes was standing, clutching the door frame with one hand, while pointing at Hitoshi with the other hand. She was just screaming bloody murder and looked like she was about to faint while pointing. 
Everyone looked at one another in confusion and just looked back at the girl. Her eyes were nearly bulging out of her skull and her skin went ghost white. Are you okay? The invisible girl asked and the poor girl just kept screaming. Hitoshi pointed at himself. Had he done something to this stranger? She pointed more vigorously at him no at Moss. What the fuck did you do? Hitoshi whispered to his cat in alarm. The poor girl sucked in several quick rapid fire breaths before finally speaking well screaming. I saw the cat die. Oh, Hitoshi realized once two and two got put together. He did the only thing he could think to do in this situation. Gaslight. No you didn't. Yes, I did. Does he look dead? He asked while holding Moss up by his underarms. I held him in my arms. She all but wailed at Hitoshi. I know it's him because his fur is green. The cat that saved me had green fur. His name is Cupcake and he belongs to a man called Aburo Shurikumo and he saved me from Thezeropointer. She paused to inhale deeply before she passed out. You. She pointed aggressively at the blue-haired boy who looked at her in surprise. You were there. You can back me up. I'm sorry. The boy shook his head firmly. I never got a good look at the cat before you scooped it up in your arms. Useless then and useless now. The girl, now exasperated, threw her arms up in the air. She then snapped her fingers like she's just thought of something. The vest. It says it on the vest that his name is she looked at the vest and frowned. Moss and his owner is not Aburo but rather Hitoshi. She deflated. Maybe the two cats are from the same litter. Ribbit. A girl with dark green hair. Hair that could rival Moss's own green color came up to the growing number of people. It's not uncommon for kittens of the same litter to look alike. That is true. A red-headed male with spiky hair and shark-like teeth joined in. When I was little our cat at the time gave birth to five kittens. Two were gray, two were black, and one was a tortie. You couldn't tell the two grays or two black ones apart. But, the girl breathed out while pointing at Moss. He's green. She nearly whined for someone, anyone to believe her. I'm sorry. Itoshi put a hand on her shoulder. I truly am, but Moss never died. I mean, if he didn't he wouldn't be here right now. Well, she wasn't taking it. Instead, she pointed aggressively at Moss. I know you're the cat who saved me. I know, and I will prove it. She hissed getting right into Moss's face with narrowed and determined eyes. It made Itoshi smile despite himself. I like you. He told her making her stop and blush a little. Well, thank you. Then she turned and stopped. Uh, she whispered in alarm making everyone else turn to see just what was going on now. What in the world? Hitoshi whispered as a giant caterpillar slithered into the room face first. Moss's green eyes narrowed and he wriggled out of Hitoshi's grip, making Hitoshi drop him. Landing on his feet, Moss was the only one brave enough to approach the caterpillar. He sniffed the caterpillar when suddenly the thing turned to make everyone cry out and back up in alarm. And then Hitoshi realized why Aburo was trying not to laugh earlier before school as he was looking at his foster father's face peeking through the opening of the sleeping bag. How long has he had that thing? Why is this the first time I'm seeing it? I have been in that doorway for over 30 seconds. Shouta unzipped himself from his yellow abomination and stood up. You all need to work on your situational awareness or else you're not going to make it as future heroes. Shouta told them all. My name is Aizawa Shouta and I am going to be your homeroom teacher for the next three years. Fully standing now he looked at all of the students in the room. He then grabbed a paper that was already sitting at his desk. The bell overhead rang loudly signaling the start of class. I'm going to do roll call. You will respond with here nothing smart. I don't tolerate lateness in my class, nor do I tolerate standing around. After today, once I walk through that threshold he pointed at the door. I expect your butts in those seats. Do you understand me? Mr. Aizawa was different from Shouta Aizawa. He was strict and Hitoshi knew he had to be. He was training superpowered teenagers. Strictness wasn't a want but a necessity. Shouta went over the roll call and Hitoshi learned all the names of his classmates. Who was who? He learned that the loud angry blonde was Bakugo Katsuki and that the girl Moss saved was Achako Yuraka. It was nice to learn the names of his fellow classmates. Everyone here. Good. Shouta put the paper down and looked at the class that was all still standing. He walked over to his sleeping bag and started to pull out gym uniforms. Everyone, put these on. We're going outside for the remainder of our class. Several students became confused and Achako even yelled but the orientation. Orientations are the same every year. You're going to learn that we do things differently as a hero course class. Not only that but it's time for your first official test. Mr. Aizawa told them all as he stared at them with an unwavering gaze. A test? Several students asked, confused as they took the uniforms for their teacher. You'll all see soon enough. I'll be out on the field when you're done getting changed. That was all he had to say to them before he walked out of the room. The classroom all broke into mumbles and Hitoshi reached up to pet Moss while holding his new gym uniform in his hands. Suddenly he felt his skirt being lifted. What is wrong with you? Hitoshi jerked away and moved his skirt down, being sure to keep his hands on the sides of his skirt. He looked at the boy in alarm. It was the purple grape-headed boy, Minta, who had pulled his skirt up. Minta shrugged. I just had to see if you were a girl or a boy. 
You're wearing a skirt, but your proportions and anatomy say you're a boy. So, I was curious. He said it too casually like it was no big deal. I mean, look at your hands. They're too huge to be a chick's. Hitoshi wanted to tuck his hands away. Are they really that big? Moss hissed angrily Minta and looked like he was about to jump down. And Hitoshi was surprised when a tongue, yes a tongue, flew out and smacked Minda in the back of the head. Don't be gross. Basui Tsuyu retracted her tongue back into her mouth. Their gender is none of your business. Don't let me catch you being that gross again. Suddenly Hitoshi's arm was grabbed by Tsuyu and she pulled him along so they were arm in arm. Oh, thank you. You didn't have to do that. Hitoshi told her once they were out of the classroom. HM, it's fine. Tsuyu told him and she then smiled cutely at him. He had no right to do that. Also, his little comment about your hands is not only out of line but just straight up wrong. See, Suyu grabbed Hitoshi's hand and pressed their hands together. Her hands were actually bigger than his hands. They let their hands lower and she continued to smile at him. You look good in that skirt, by the way. Yeah. Suddenly arms wrapped around his shoulders, nearly knocking Moss down. Mina was grinning and she poked his cheek. You know, if the boys give you a hard time in the changing room I don't mind if you change with us. Neither do I Suyu told him. Hitoshi's face went ablaze. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. I'll change with the boys. Besides, you aren't the only girls in the changing room and I don't want to freak anyone out. He scratched at the back of his neck. But thank you. I appreciate your kindness. He bowed to both girls respectfully before he straightened up and smiled at them. They got to the changing rooms and Hitoshi did change with the boys. Only, he was smarter than the other nosy boys and he changed in the stall. Though, as he was leaving he did hear mine to ask Denki I wonder if he wears panties as well. Dude, Moss gave mine to another loud hiss. Hitoshi didn't need to read minds to know exactly what Moss was telling the creep. Mind your business. He got out to the field and up to Shouta. Sire, you don't look like Vlad. I'm beginning to think I've been duped. He teased his foster father. Shouta gave a small side smile. I have to keep you on your toes, kid. Never know what might happen. He whispered. Look, I'm giving you a forewarning before everybody else gets here. He continued to whisper in a way that only Hitoshi could hear him. What I'm going to tell them doesn't fully apply to you. I know you're at a disadvantage and I can't punish you for it. Do your best. Okay. Shouta patted Hitoshi's shoulder before moving away from him. Do my best. He whispered with a head tilt. He decided to just let it go and see what his foster father was talking about. It wouldn't be too much longer before everyone else would join and all dressed in their new gym uniforms. Everybody here. Good. Mr. Aizawa pointed at Bakugo. You Mr. Aizawa pulled a baseball out of his scarf. How far can you throw a ball normally? I dunno. Bakugo shrugged. 50 meters. Show me. Shouted toss the ball to Bakugo. Stand in the circle, don't step out of it, and toss the ball to the best of your abilities. Bakugo, once again, shrugged and stepped inside the circle, and tossed the ball up and down in his hand a few times before he pitched it like he was playing baseball. Shout attract the ball's projection with a handheld device. Once it was done he held it up for everyone to see. Bakugo's ball went as far as 64 meters. Hey, not bad. Smoke that, you extras. Bakugo taunted and stuck his tongue out. Talk about a bad case of main character syndrome. Itoshi shook his head and looked at Moss. Right, Moss. He asked his cat and Moss got a look on his face that seemed to say, Buddy, you have no idea. Now, another ball was put into Bakugo's hand. Throw it again. This time with your quirk. Bakugo looked elated once he was given the ultimate permission. Quirk usage. Something none of them were used to even Hitoshi despite his extra quirk training this last year. He grabbed the ball and his hand glowed a bright orange. Hitoshi, having been up close with this boy's quirk during the entrance exam knew exactly what was going to happen. His first instinct was to grab Moss and tightly put his hands over his cat's ears. Boom. Hitoshi winced and prayed that Moss didn't suffer hearing damage. He let go of Moss's ears. Are you okay? He asked his cat and Moss simply nodded before getting back on Hitoshi's shoulders to continue to watch. Mr. Aizawa turned and showed them the score. 705.02 meters was what was read. Jesus. Hitoshi whispered as did others. As heroes, your quirk is your tool and I'm going to help you train that tool. This test is to test out your quirks. As of today, you will be given permission to use your quirks inside of class, unlike what you've been taught in middle school. There was practically a cheer from everyone. Well, everyone except Hitoshi. Hitoshi just kept his mouth shut. He knew better. This was way too good to be true. So, he put his hands on his hips and waited. It all came together when Kaminari suddenly said we finally get to use our quirks. This is going to be so fun in the next few years a breeze. Ah, uh, yeah, even I know that's not a good thing to say. Hitoshi scratched at his face and got a chill down his spine at the smile, if you can call it that, that spread across Mr. Aizawa's face. Oh, you think this is going to be fun? He asked in a chilling voice while staring at all of the, now cowering, students. How about I set in the reality for you all? We're going to do a series of physical tests. 
testing out you and your quirks. The person with the lowest score out of all you will be expelled. A shuddering wavering cry left several students' mouths as a couple even looked like they might cry. Uh, now it makes sense. Itoshi thought and crossed his arms. He still smiled. I'm still going to do my very best. Itoshi, Mr. Aizawa stepped up to him and they stared at one another. Your cat, SB Moss, can stay with me well. In a surprising move, Moss jumped down from Hitoshi's shoulder and sat next to him. No, Moss, Itoshi asked in confusion. You can't join in, buddy, he told his cat. Moss's ears went back as he stared at Hitoshi and Mr. Aizawa alike. He then rose his nose in the air. I think he wants to join in. On his own, Hitoshi told Mr. Aizawa and the man shook his head. You won't get number one. I know you won't. His ear flicked and he gave Shouta a cold look. Oh, let the little guy join. I think it'll be interesting. Kaminari suddenly piped up. Ada joined in just as quickly to silence the blonde. No, he is a service animal. This will distract him. Actually, Moss isn't on duty. So, he isn't hurting anything by joining. Itoshi told Ada. Come on, let the cat join. He seems smart enough. I mean I've seen him respond to a question. Mina demanded. He's like dot 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 an unofficial member of our class. Itoshi and Shouta looked at one another and Shouta just shrugged. Fine, take the vest off him. It'll restrict his movement. Itoshi did just that. What are you trying to prove? He whispered to Moss while unclipping the vest. Moss's ears flickered again once the vest was off and he shook his pelt vigorously. Okay, you have the 50 meter dash to start with. From there we'll do grip strength, standing long jump, repeated side steps, sit-ups, and the ball throw. Back Hugo will not participate in the ball throw as he was already demonstrated his ability dot 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 or dot 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 Moss will also not participate in the ball throw as he, as you all can see, is a cat. Nor will he do the sit-ups for the same reason as above. So, came the tests. Atoshi did pretty decently in the 50 meter dash. Not the worst nor the best. Funny enough, Moss came in third behind Ida and Todoroki. Did you know cats can run upwards to over 4,000 meters per hour? Hitoshi did. The worst on the dash was Minda with his tiny legs. The standing long jump was next. Achaka won that one with the use of her quirk to make her float, but Moss did come in second. Hitoshi was sure Moss was looking smug right at Bakugo. Like those two had beef. It was the same deal. He wasn't the best. Coming in a fifth, but again, it was better than Minta. Those tiny legs did nothing for that guy. Hitoshi almost felt bad. Almost. Moss could not participate in the grip strength. For obvious reasons. Hitoshi, again, did decently. The best went to Kirishima and Sato. Next came the repeated side steps. Nobody could compare with the quadruped. Moss dominated them, which was honestly just impressive in Hitoshi's eyes and strangely surreal. I'm losing to a cat. Minda whispered fearfully as he cowered down. Yay Arazu, before I get expelled, let me motorboat just once. Shut your fucking mouth. Hitoshi hissed to Minda. Hitoshi wouldn't have cared if Minda hadn't talked like that to Yei Arazu. Have some respect and stop being so pathetic. Minda sneered at Hitoshi. Why do you care? It's not like someone like you has ever talked to a goddess like her. Or is it because you wish you had her smoking body? Contrary to what you just said, Hitoshi and I have ballet classes together. Yei Arazu calmly told Minta. And your comment about my body is out of line. Oh, now it makes sense. You're a trap. Hitoshi just sneered at Minta. He had no idea what a trap was, but it didn't exactly sound like a compliment. Whatever. You want to keep your teeth. It was shocking when Minta's head was grabbed by Bakugo and he was lifted in the air. He hey, Minta flared and that caused everyone to turn an alarm. Apologize. Bakugo hissed between tightly clenched teeth. What's going on? Mr. Aizawa asked. Someone was just apologizing. Bakugo urged while squeezing the sides of Minta's face. Ak, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Minta cried and he was dropped unceremoniously to the ground. Mr. Aizawa's eyes narrowed. Well, we're not finished. We got two more tests to do. So look alive. He then turned. But Itoshi noticed that he was keeping a sharp eye on Minta. For the final two tests, Moss couldn't join in. So, his vest was clipped back on. You did good, Kitty. Achako told Moss as she finished up her sit-ups with Hagakure, they were the first done. She got on the ground and then got right in Moss's face. I will prove you were the one to save me. I know it was you. Achako, stop harassing the cat, please. Mr. Aizawa ordered as he passed by her. Achako made an I'm watching you. Motion with her hands before walking away. Finally, came the ball throw. Achako knocked them out of the water with an infinity score as she sent her ball to space. Itoshi knew he was dead last before he even stepped up to the circle. Still, he did his best. 40.5 meters was what he was met with. Yeah, I saw that coming. He whispered while rubbing at the back of his head. Okay, is this kid quirkless? Minda asked, almost sounding appalled. Once Mr. Aizawa walked away to go and tally the scores. You haven't used your quirk once and I'm starting to think you don't even have one. Moss's back arched as he hissed. It was an angry hiss that indicated that he may even lash out. 
Hitoshi gripped his cat's leash tight. Funny how you only ask these things when Mr. Aizawa's back is turned or his attention is elsewhere. Hitoshi turned to the boy in his anger. And so what if he is? Anjiro came to Hitoshi's defense. I mean, without my tail, I'm basically quirkless. Same for me, Hagakure mumbled. My quirk is that I'm invisible. I have no special powers to give me an advantage during any of these tests. So, in other words, shut your mouth, you grape fucker. Bakugo grumbled. Because you've been pissing me off all fucking day. Mind to put his hands up. Jeez, I was just asking a question. There's no need to get on to me. But there is. Ada yelled next. All day it's been one comment after another. We are here to learn. And you're rude. And quite frankly, inappropriate comments have been distracting us. In other words, shut your trap because you've been making all of us mad. Dark shadow popped out of Takoyami's shoulder and poked Minda harshly in the chest. Okay, okay. Minda breathed out while keeping his hands in the air. Besides, Itoshi crossed his arms over his chest. I'm not quirkless. I just don't feel like showing off my quirk yet. He then turned and stalked away. Come along, Moss. He ordered and Moss turned his nose up at Minda before joining his owner up to Mr. Aizawa. The scores were tallied. Way to go, Yeyurazu. Hitoshi told his friend as she got first place. Hitoshi didn't do too bad either in tenth place. Yeah, it wasn't glamorous but hey, he wasn't last. I'm last. Minda whined. Hitoshi was glad to see the little fucker go. A logical ruse. Came Mr. Aizawa's yell with that fucking smile. Are you fucking kidding me? Hitoshi thought almost appalled as he looked at his foster parent in alarm and he wasn't the only one. I was kidding. I only wanted you guys to try your best on the test. Mr. Aizawa called. But know this the smile was gone and only anger. I can and will expel you from the hero course. I expect the best. Not only that but I expect you all to behave. I do not tolerate bullying and if caught you will be out of this course faster than you can think. Am I clear? Yes, sensei. Everyone stated softly with bowed heads and a sense of dread like they were walking on eggshells. Good, now go and get changed. Itoshi, stay behind. Itoshi did. They waited until everyone was gone before they spoke. Listen, I have no evidence of mine as bullying. I can't expel him unless otherwise. His parents are on the HSPC. I need a reason with him. Understand? Itoshi nodded. Yeah, I do. Good, trust me. I already don't like him. Shouta shook his head firmly. Oh, Moss, Nedzu came by and dropped something off for you. Hang on a collar no a tie was slipped around Moss's neck and Shouta gave it a quick tie. It was a red tie, mocking that of the UA tie. He said because you're already green you wouldn't need anything else. All right, go on you too. I'll see you at the end of the day for homeroom. It certainly was not the worst first day Hitoshi had during school, but most definitely the most exciting. Bonus. The lunch bell rang and Hitoshi's arm was grabbed by Tsu. Come and eat with us, Hitoshi. She asked him and he smiled. Okay. Ah, uh, Todoroki, do you have a sister? Achako inquired the quiet and reserved boy from her spot in the open doorway. I do, but she's grown, Todoroki explained while slipping out of his seat. A familiar voice shyly spoke. I'm here to give my big brother his lunch. Iri. Itoshi called and it was like the Red Sea parted to let the little girl pass. Iri had a bento in her hands and she beamed at Itoshi. She ran to him and he caught her with ease. I'm a big girl. She puffed her chest out proudly and handed him his bento. It's from Papa. Aw, thank you. He kissed her cheek making her giggle. Do you want to eat lunch with us? I would, but Papa and I are already eating lunch. She wriggled out of his grip and he placed her on the floor. All right, see you after school. Bye. She waved before retreating out of the classroom. Next thing Hitoshi knew all of the girls were swarming him. They were all eager to get to know about his uber adorable baby sister. It was strange actually having people wanting to be around him. But he wasn't complaining. Another one. I take it your first day was successful. Nedzu inquired as he moved his queen chess piece up a square. Izuku witnessed this move and pondered on his own move. Using his paw he gently moved a pawn forward. Fine, I guess. He answered the principal. Granted, he wasn't expecting to be anywhere near Bakugo Katsuki but Nedzu laid claim to Izuku's pawn with his queen. That's fantastic, Moss. Izuku moved his rook forward silently. Sloppy, Nedzu mumbled while moving his own rook forward. How was young Katsuki? Izuku looked up at Nedzu before he moved his own queen forward, claiming Nedzu's rook. Same as he always is. Loud. Now, you two were friends in Aldera, correct? It must have been nice to see him again. No, no, it wasn't. Izuku stopped the game as he felt like a toddler, stamping his foot down on the chessboard. We're not friends. We haven't been friends in a long time. He growled before moving a pawn forward with his paw. Oh my. I had no clue. May I ask why? Nedzu inquired while moving another one of his pawns forward so it was face to face with Izuku's pawn. Izuku shrugged and laid claim to the pawn in front of him. People change. Once I was diagnosed as quirkless he became a major jerk. He made my middle school life hell. 
I see. So Nedzu put his hand on a pawn and paused with his finger still on the tip of the piece. He was a bully. I had literal scars on my body from him using his quirk on me. If I so much as breathed wrong he would attack like a wild animal. He yelled so much that I actually had a fear of people raising their voices for the longest time. But, I'm willing to put it all up for Hitoshi's sake. Izuku explained. Nedzu hummed and took his finger off of the piece. And your teachers didn't stop him. They encouraged it. Izuku huffed. Look, it sucks, but, like I said, I'm willing to put up with it because Hitoshi is going to need me. But I'm warning you now if Kaken tries anything on Hitoshi it's on. I see. I know you said Toshinori was one of the reasons behind your suicide. Is it possible that Bakugo is the second reason? Izuku stayed silent, in a rapid flurry of movement. Nedzu grabbed his king and moved it forward claiming Izuku's pieces until he was in front of Izuku's own king. Checkmate. 